The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors. Our schools. The places we go. And the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. Welcome in to Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports and our first state orthopedic game of the week. We are at Smyrna High School as the second ranked in Class 3A Smyrna Eagles host the third ranked Class 3A team in the state, the Sussex Central Golden Knights. Golden Knights come in undefeated and Smyrna coming in with the one loss to Middletown on a late touchdown, 21-14 was the final in that one. I'm Glenn Frazier alongside Pat Gariantes, Mike Lang on camera. Our game of the week is being brought to you by First State Orthopedics with 29 physicians at 16 locations, providing both surgical and non-surgical treatment for a variety of orthopedic conditions and specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. They serve as team physicians for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Their doctors are readily available to all the local emergency departments, medical aid, and urgent care centers for consult and treatment. Give them a call, 302-322-3400, or visit firststateortho.com. Be sure to mention you saw their ad right here on Delaware Live Sports. Well, it's not going to be a perfect night for a football game, that's for sure. This is going to be a great matchup here tonight. We're going to have some wind. That's obvious because uh, Ian is knocking on the door in the southern part of the state. And we're also going to have to put up with some intermittent rain, which could get heavier as this game progresses. I may bring in my broadcast partner now, Pat Gariantes, and we'll have a contrast in styles tonight because we're going to have a traditional wing tee offense run by Coach John Wells and the Sussex Central Golden Knights against the spread offense for the Smarty Eagles. Yeah, Glenn, and it's going to be interesting, right? It, it, this almost ends up working into the advantage of both teams. They both like to run the football a lot, uh, potentially sloppy conditions. It started to drizzle here already in pregame. As you said, the wind's going to pick up. The rain will pick up as we go. This is going to come down to who takes care of the football the best here today. Like you said, Coach Wells of Sussex Central running that wing tee offense, the misdirection. Uh, not really sure where that ball's going to go. Smyrna defense has been an immovable object early in the season, so that, that's going to be quite the challenge. And can Smyrna figure some things out offensively? We've seen them, uh, again, in that Middletown game, struggle in the first half to move the football um, much better in the second half. Let's see what they come out with here today with the weather conditions, if they go back into uh, a heavy run flow or if they mix in the pass a little bit. Time will tell. All right, we're going to step aside for our first commercial break here during our pregame show. When we come back, we'll go a little bit deeper into the Sussex Central Golden Knights, both sides of the ball, and we'll do that when we come back here on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here, and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets, and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Hi, I'm credit. Scott Kammer from Soto Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lewis in the villages of Five Points open seven days a week, best happy hour around. See you soon. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer from... 
We're back here on the pregame show on the first state ortho game of the week from Smyrna High School at Sussex Central against the Smyrna Eagles. In the last five to seven years, these two have had quite a rivalry. And really, Smyrna has been one of the few teams that's been able to go to the castle in Georgetown and be successful against Sussex Central. The Golden Knights, on the other hand, they've had success up here at Smyrna. But when these two get together, it's a great game. And when we talk about Sussex Central, you have to talk about head coach John Wells, who got his 200th career win last week. And he runs the wing tee offense, which, Pat, I know you just love that. And he has three stud running backs that he can feed the ball to. Well, that's it, Glenn. Yeah, I do. It, it's definitely got a place in my heart, as we've talked about in previous streams. Uh, yeah, you're right. The three-headed beast down there. Number 22, Andrew Long, the senior. Small guy, 5'6", 157, but packs a punch. Christopher Shields, senior fullback, six foot two ten, number twenty three, and then the, the dual threat that this guy is just special here. Yeah. Number one, PJ Henry, six one one sixty five, makes men miss, and he can really get after it. And then the quarterback can can get it done too. The junior, number twelve, TJ Morris, um, and then you go Jackson Steen as well as the wide receiver. He's been great. And what we saw in the William Penn game, Glenn, another guy to keep an eye on, number eight, Kyle Custis, yeah. the junior tight end, came up with six big catches in that William Penn game. So uh, time will tell if, if he can get in the mix as yeah. well. Now, Pat, to be successful running the ball in the wing tee offense with a misdirection, you have to have a good offensive line. Yes, you and do. Coach Wells certainly has that. We'll start with the tackles. Tyler Buttridge, 6'3", 215. On the other side, only a sophomore, mm -hmm. Anthony Taylor at 5'10", 225. And in the middle, the guards, Wyatt Helens, Ivan Neal, and uh, maybe one of the best centers in the state, Colin Tucker, 6'1", 230. Yeah, Tucker's been great for them, right? He really sets the tone up front. The most important guy, well, I shouldn't say the most important guys, but the guys that really are the keys to the wing tee are the guards, right? The wing tee, they pull a lot. They yep. get out. they got to block secondary guys. Wyatt Helens, Ivan Neal, both have been very good. Ivan Neal, that's a prototype right here, Glenn, if you look at him. Six foot, 195, right? Typically, you don't think that's a lineman size. But yeah. in the wing tee offense, you want guys that can get out there and move. Both these guys can, and that, that's a key to their success. Let's talk about Sussex Central's uh, defense, and, and it really begins with the two uh, defensive ends. Kevon Moore, Burdell, and Kyle Custis, they just get after people. They set the edge, and they put a lot of pressure on the QB. Well, and that's it, Glenn. I mean, you got a three-man front. Be able to set the edge with those guys. They, they've been tremendous at doing that early this year. This is one of the best defenses in the state of Delaware. This is going to be a fun matchup for sure. And then you look in the second level, Ivan Neal, Justin Negron, Christopher Shields, Gabe Cannon, all four of those guys can make some plays uh, out there on the defensive side of the ball. And then we've seen uh, Jackson Reef Steen play very well on the defensive side as well, getting some picks. All right, when we come back from this break, we'll hear from Smarta head coach Mike Judy, and we'll do that when we come back here on the pregame show on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not you know people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. I would always pass my- Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at premierptsb.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? Welcome to Premier Glenn Fraser here with performance. the head coach of the Smyrna Eagles, Michael Judy, and I would be remiss if I didn't say first and foremost, Coach, glad to have you back on the sidelines last week where you belong. Thanks a lot. It was good to be back. Let's talk about your opponent uh, tonight, Sussex Central Golden Knights. Two programs have been really 
the top two programs the last seven, eight years, and the old Henlopen North, and now the Class 3A. District Welcome to two. Career Physical Therapy. Talk about facing Sussex Central and also facing maybe one of the teams that's uh, left in the state that still runs a true wing T offense. Yeah, well, I mean, I got first thing we got to make a comment about, you know, Coach Wells. He has been doing it a long, long time. I'm not going to throw the how many years out there, but <laughs> to date him, but uh, he's been doing it a long time. And he's really, really good. And he's got a great staff. Uh, I think most recently he got um, his 200th victory, I believe. Uh, so congrats to Coach Wells. Um, I already wish him congratulations. But, again, congrats on that to the whole community. Um, they're a really, really well-coached team year in and year out. It doesn't really matter, you know, uh, talent level. It always seems there's always production. There's always positivity in production. They always play really tough defensively. And then, you know, they they run a they run a offense that was, you know, I was really familiar with in high school when I played. And, you know, the with the advent of the spread offense and how it, it trickled down to high school, um, you know, he stuck to his guns and he 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 didn't fall into that trap of that he was a, a wise coach. He stuck to his guns and he coaches what he knows. And he's really, really good. He's really, really good at running that offense. So then you throw into the mix at how stacked they are this year. Um, you know, they had three running backs, athletes that are all seniors, uh, the, the Long, uh, Henry, and Shields. Um, that's a three-headed attack. And the quarterback being such a great athlete, it just makes for a very, very dangerous opponent to play. Back here on the pregame show, Glenn Frazier alongside Pat Gariantes. Let's talk now about the smart offense. By the way, thanks to head coach Mike Judy for giving us some time during the week, and uh, he does have a lot of respect for Coach John Wells. Let's talk about the smart offense. The question mark is, Pat, what are we going to see out of them tonight? Well, that's it, right? We watched that first half against Middletown a few weeks back, and we saw almost exclusively an earthquake look with Ymir Knight in the backfield. And then in the second half, they kind of shifted, right? Brian Wright started to get in the mix a little bit. And then last week, Brian Wright really did a great job against the Caesar Rodney defense, trying to pick them apart over 200-plus over passing yards. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they go with here today. Uh, obviously, Ymir Knight is, is a difference maker. Markel Holman in the backfield, difference maker. But they do have some guys that can make some plays in the passing game if they can protect Wright, yeah. uh, whether it be you know Andre Ashley or Nolan Fretz as well as Kamaj. Uh, Kearney so um, you know obviously number eight number seven are going to be the main guys to keep an eye on but let's see if they can mix in the passing game a little bit too and I think a big part of that's going to be with these these young men up front and we don't want to forget about uh, Timothy Yancey the sophomore he scored at 40 only yeah. time he carried the ball against Middletown 47 yard touchdown run yeah the guys up front uh, they're good and they're big led by senior Evan Blower at center Roscoe and Yuli are the guards and Keebway and Price or the tackles, we'll also see some of Dylan Wessel at guard as well. And then that smarter defense, they've been nothing but phenomenal this year. Yeah, this, this is the bread and butter for this team. I mean, this, this, this defense really gets after it. Up front, I mean, you got five guys that can make plays. Brandon West, Nate Chandler, Caleb Blaine, C.J. Kearney, and Julian Charles Gar. Uh, Brandon West already this year, Glenn, 11 sacks. In three games. In three games. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is getting after it. I mean, that's like uh, – uh, Micah Parsons type <laughs> numbers. Um, Nate Chandler, 13 tackles in that win over Caesar Rodney. Uh, these guys just get after it up front. And then in the, I mean, it doesn't stop. You no. get to the linebacker level. Cole Moyer, he's been making plays since he was a freshman here. Yeah. Uh, Junior Dernal, Nasir Jenkins, Steven Driver. Those guys are difference-making linebackers. And then you go back into the secondary. You go Spears, Michael Stinnett's been great. He has an interception on the year. Corey Williams. Chris Galvin, Kassir Lee, uh, these guys can make plays in the secondary as well. All three levels of the defense can be difference makers for the Smyrna team, and this that is what's leading the charge for this group so far this year. So if you look on paper and take into consideration uh, the weather and the conditions that we're going to be playing the game in, you would think this is going to be a defensive struggle in a very low-scoring game. Yeah, I, I would think so. Um, you, you take all things into consideration, and – these two defenses are elite, right? They're still 
could they still could be works in progress offensively? I would think this is going to be yeah, a low scoring game. It's going to be a, a a time of possession game as well. Um, both teams like to keep the ball on the ground. Who can come up with stops? Who can get off the field? Um, that's going to be the difference in this one. Also, we have to keep in mind that Sussex Central has a, pl a pretty good kicker. Yeah. So uh, Eby, Leva Le uh, Fojeko, he could be a difference in the game. It might, you know, could be an extra point because we know Smyrna goes for two all the time. And if you miss a couple of two-point conversions, then you're behind the eight ball if Sussex Central is converting on the extra points. And they also could use him on short forward, uh, field goal when they get down inside the red zone if the uh, drive stalls. Smyrna, you don't look at them as a team that tries even attempts a field goal that often, if ever. When they get inside the red zone, it's four down territory. Right, it is. And, it, you know, that special teams, we talk about offense, defense a lot, right? There's always a third part of this game, and you got to be good in all of them, right? And that's that's been the difference. Is Smyrna going to be able to convert these two-point conversions? They've been very good at it in the past. That could be a difference in this one as well, Glenn. It's a, it's a great point, and... Uh, we're we're going to find out exactly exactly what the difference will be. Captains are out of the center of the field right now. We have the flip of the opening coin, see who's going to receive the opening kickoff. And you know, Glenn, looking over here on our left sideline to our left, uh, the, the the wind is howling right now. It's yeah. blowing from our side, press box side, Smyrna sideline, to the Sussex Central sideline. So it is a cross field wind, yeah. which is big when it comes to, as you had mentioned, kicking the kicking game and the throwing game. It's going to throw everything off. It's not like it's a, it's going end zone to end zone where it's just, you know, it yeah. depends on what side you're going. You're getting the wind no matter where you're going in this one. Yeah, more of a, a almost an east to west wind right now blowing in here at Smyrna High School at Charles B. Williams Stadium. And now the opening flip of the coin. John Wells and Mike Judy were both out on the field momentarily. They have left and to their respective sidelines. And we're about ready to get the call from the White Hat. It looks like yeah, Sussex Central might have deferred. They're looking to see which side the wind's <laughs> it's blowing. It's not really <laughs> much of an advantage, <laughs> yeah, is it? <laughs> it's going to be a tough one right there. That was the big decision. That's awesome. They had Jackson Steen out there trying to make the decision. Smyrna will receive the opening kickoff. They will move from our left to our right. Golden Knights in their road, blue helmets and pants, white jerseys with yellow numbers. And Smyrna in the home reds with the white helmets and the stripe and the eagle on the side. And now the eagles to make their grand entrance to get this crowd pumped up. Not a whole lot of people have come up from the Georgetown, Millsboro area. Hey, it's, it's understood, and, and you know, if, if you're tuning in right now yeah. to us, we're, we're glad to have you. Um, we're, looking, we're looking forward to it, ladies and gents. This is going to be a good one, no doubt about it. Yeah, maybe all that promo stuff that we put out there on social media really worked. The people from Sussex Central said, I've got a real good seat right here in the living room. It's true. This is the truth. This is going to be a good one, Glenn. Two, two of the, the premier programs in the state of Delaware, yeah. at least through the last seven years. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a fun one. A lot of state championships, I believe five between the two of them. Five in the, the last seven. Yeah. And so this this is going to be a tremendous battle. I'm really looking forward to it. And it's strength against strength. They both got great defenses. Yeah. They both got great running games. It's just going to be who, who's got the better of their uh, of their strengths today. Sure will be. We see Mike Judy right now on the screen. So great to see him on the sideline, Isn't it? Glenn. Yeah. I told him that in the interview. As a first and foremost, glad to see you on the sidelines where you belong. And then Dan Wagner, I'm sure, somewhere heard that and said, yeah, and now I get to go back on top of the press box where I want to be. <laughs> he loves uh, to call the game from up top. He says, I don't know how I ever did it on the sidelines. It's tough. I mean, there's definitely a difference, right? I mean, you got the bird's eye view up top. You don't have that down there on the field. A lot, of, a lot of distractions, I feel like, potentially down on the field as opposed to being up top. But here we go, man. I'm excited. The juices are flowing. Glenn, there's a breeze in the air. Obviously, this is a nor'easter breeze, but I'm liking it. I'm excited, ready to yeah, go. Yeah, here we go. E.B. Pujeko will kick it off. Back T for Smyrna. Gway to the bottom of your screen. Yamir Knight to the top. It's going to be Gway from the five-yard line. Up the middle field, great block by Yamir Knight. Springs him right up the middle. 
Breaks to the outside across the 45 yard line. What an awesome block by Yamir Knight. Here we go, Glenn. We're going to get a look at it here, right? We're going to bring back the instant replay here for this. All right. Glenn. As you can see, you're right. Right in the middle, Yamir Knight in the middle of your screen, lifting the defender up and putting them down. Oh. Spring in the big return. What a job. Great job by Yamir Knight. He does it all. Now let's see what the Eagles start out with here. It looks like they're in their regular quarterback set, but they're bunched up, bunched up. Yeah, that's Fretz behind Knight. The handoff goes to Holman, left side, nothing there, no gain. Great job there by that Sussex Central front, setting the edge. You had mentioned it, Glenn, that defensive front, and they did a great job of it right there. Not a whole lot of room there for Holman. Smyrna goes without the huddle. Now Fretz will line up as a wide out to the bottom of your screen. See Wright shouting some things out to his lineman up front, getting them positioned. Uses the hard clap. Cadence gives it off again right up the middle to Holman, trying to find some room, nothing there. Uh, Two carries for him and really no yards. Yeah, that was a, a wonderful job by Custis, scraping down the line from his defensive end position. Holman was sitting there waiting for a hole develop, and it just never did. And Custis just zoomed in on him, took him down for the no gain. Third down and 10 at the Eagle 46-yard line. Good field position after the kickoff, but first two downs have been able to move the ball. And this is going to be big. Let's see what, if they go with the passing game here. Blitz coming up the middle and off the screen. edge, trying to set up the screen, and Sussex Central read it. That's Throw right. near side, catch is made by Fretz. That, that should be an illegal receiver downfield, Glenn. You got a penalty? Yeah, you're, you should. You had linemen. It's a screen play, right? Yeah, you had linemen yep, yep, downfield, yep. and yeah. Holman wasn't there. I mean, that, that's just that's a guy, that's a quarterback that's just kind of, you know, hey, if it's not there, you just got to throw that ball into the ground. Yep, and that's exactly what the call is. I don't think they had quite the first down yardage to begin with. If it would have been fourth and about four. But I'm sure Sussex Central wants to oh yeah, it's do, do a little bit better with the field position that they're seeing right now. and back them up and they will yeah, yeah well especially with the weapons that Smyrna has a fourth and five yeah that's a makeable if they wanted to fake it that's a makeable you know distance you know that was a great job by the DN uh, Kyle Custis he was blitzing and then all of a sudden he he saw the quarterback backpedaling and he noticed it's a screen and he went back to the line of scrimmage Glenn that's a great point by you right you're taught as a defender if all of a sudden, the li your offensive lineman doesn't block you. you got to recognize, oh, there's a reason why they're not blocking me. And he did a great job tailing Holman there. You're exactly right. Third down, about 15. Wright takes a snap, drops back, looks far sideline, has his man complete right at the stick for no gain. Great. It'll be fourth and 10. Great defense there by Sussex Central. They just played back, defended the lane, did not let anyone behind them. I believe dropping back into coverage there was, was number six, Steen. And actually, no, that was actually that was either Steen or Custis. Can't quite remember. Okay. See who that was out there. But they did a great job of, of coming up and making the play. Now, this has been an interesting uh, play for Smyrna. And we saw at Middletown, Yamir Knight usually punts, but Gway sometimes will take a pitch back and he'll punt the ball. Fourth yeah. and 10 from their own 46 yard line. Rolling near side and now punting the ball, getting it off right in front of a Sussex Central defender. And it takes a central bounce back across midfield. So the punt, net punt goes two yards. Yeah, it's a tough one, Glenn. You know, and this is a strategy Smyrna's employed over the recent years. But lining your guy back only five yards, four yards in the backfield and, and thinking that he's going to have, you know, the, the space with a rush coming to him to right. get a punt away and not get a block. It's a dangerous game that they play. That time, I think Knight felt the pressure and punted it straight up into the air. All right, T.J. Morris under center. And they give it to P.J. Henry, trying to get the edge on the far side. Nothing there for him. Yeah, Looked like Nate Chandler was in there along with Brandon West. Yeah, he ran right into the teeth of that defense. It's going to be a challenge, right? If, uh, you know, this is strength against strength. Right off the jump, they go with the sweep. And... Wonderful job there by the Smyrna defensive line. That's going to be the battle to keep an eye on up front. Can these can these guards, can these tackles prevent the Smyrna defensive line from making penetration? Exactly. 
Split out wide to the far side of the field is a number that we don't have on the roster. Give is right up the middle to about the Smyrna 46, a gain of two yards. Yeah, I don't have a number four from Sussex Central on my roster. It was uh, Shields there on the carry, did a great job of you know, lowering his shoulders, trying to make something happen. But again, I mean, it, this is this is a tough defensive front to move to open holes up against. And uh, this is going to be tough sledding here for Central. Brings up third down and eight. Wide out number four again. Split to the top of your screen. Fumble on the snap. It's on the ground, and I think Central fell back on it. I thought T.J. Morris got on there first, but instead it was Shields. Yeah, good job by Shields just being in the right place at the right time. But what a dominating start there for that Smyrna defensive front. Those first two plays, they, they only netted two yards, and then the botched snap, and now the punt unit's got to come out for Sussex Central. Yeah, they, we said this was going to be the case, Glenn, two, two immovable objects <laughs> out there on the defensive side of the ball, and it's rang true here to start this one off. Looks like Gway is back deep. In the punt is Steen. Yeah, Reeve takes a snap. It's a good one. Gets off a nice punt. This is returnable. Knight fields it at about the 13-yard line, tries to get to the far side, and is tackled at the 20. About a return of seven yards. Smyrna now at, th at their own 20-yard line. 7.31 to go in a scoreless opening quarter. Oh, and there's a penalty here after the play. This is a dead ball foul here, Glenn. See what they call on this. But that was a great pump by Steen. A little hang time, a little, little distance to it. Not much Gway could do with the coverage. Now waiting to see the call. It's a block it's against in the back. Smyrna, yeah. So that's going to end up being, I think, a half a distance to the goal. So a, a first and ten at the ten. Ninety yards to go here for Smyrna. The spot foul looks like it was at the 21, so it'll back them up to a, a 11. There you are. You're yep. correct. So let's see if Smyrna will make any adjustments here in this set. Two wide outs to the top and bottom of your screen. And Brian Wright has Holman alongside of him in the backfield. Puts it right into the belly of Holman. He's wrapped up from behind, but not before he gets some positive yardage. About three yards. Yeah, good job there by Holman once again. I mean, there's Custis just pinching down the line. It's just wonderful technique, scraping down the line on the read option play and stopping Holman. But, um, you know, Markell did a great job of following his blockers and picking up four or five. It's Holman again, off the left side again. He gets up close to the 20-yard line. It'll be about a yard and a half shy of the first. Good push on that left side of the offensive line for uh, for Smyrna with Roscoe and, and Harris making some things happen over there and, and allowing Holman to just follow the, the, the push. So third down and short. Yeah, good blocking on that left side. Blauer, Roscoe. And jumping Sussex Central on that right side. That's going to give the Eagles a first down. Good discipline there by the Eagles. Good job there by, by Wright, putting some voice inflection into his hard count, getting Sussex Central to jump off sides. Okay, I have that number four now. It's Jameel Watson. Here we go. Let's see where he, what number he was. Yep, Smarter ready to go. Out at the Eagle 25. Wright looks to the sidelines as they change up the play. Low snap. Wright gets it. Back to pass. Now he steps up in the pocket. Throws downfield oh. and over the head of his intended receiver and incomplete. Not a bad throw. And you know what? Right, right there, he, you could see that the pass rush was it was affecting him a little bit. But he did do the right thing once he decided, hey, this is what I'm going to do. He steps up into the pocket, throws on the run. And it actually, it's not, not a terrible throw to Holman. He made the right decision, a right read there. Just threw it a little too far for his, uh, his tailback out of the backfield. Kind of like the matchup, too. I mean, you got a running back on a linebacker there. That's usually a good, good way, good, you know, good, good area to go. Second down and 10. Tight formation this time. It's a 
RPO, and it's a flip out into the flat. That's Yamir Knight, gets up across the 40 and out of bounds about the 42-yard line. Nice design play. It was. You know, we've seen them try and do that against Middletown a few times, but without the, the run fake. They brought the guy in motion, but didn't do the run fake. They, it looks like they incorporated that. The threat of Holman is going to at least hold the defense for a little bit. Nobody ran in motion with Knight. He was able to spring that away for a first down. Nice play design there by Smyrna. Now they spread it out. Trips to the top of your screen. Right again, back to pass. Steps up in the middle of the pocket. Throws it out in the flat and in and out of the hands of the receiver, Holman, and incomplete. Yeah, he's lucky there because that was yeah. great coverage by Gabe Cannon out here on this near sideline, and that ball went right through his hands, and there was no one in front of him. Yeah, he was a little upset with himself, too. He's in great positioning. He, he dropped into the flat there and was in the passing lane. Ball just went right through his hands. Second down, 10 to go at the Eagle 42-yard line. We're close to the five-and-a-half-minute mark here in this scoreless opening quarter. Wright gives the play to his offensive line. Has Holman to his left. Hands it off to Holman again. Puts the helmet down, and he runs into a stiff defensive line. No gain. Yeah, that's just not much room. Not much room to operate right there. Moore, Bridell, and... Looks like that was uh, Chris Shields on the blitz. Both those guys swallowing them up in the backfield. Third and ten play. Trips again to the top of your screen. Frets to the bottom in the slot. Right check the sideline. Back to pass again, steps up in the pocket, throws it down near sideline, looking for Fretch. Oh! What a leaping catch at the 25-yard line. We got to see that one again. What yes. a play, what a catch. You're not kidding. I mean, and here we go, Glenn. We're going to pull the replay right up here for you. I mean, you can see him drop back to pass. What a throw, what ball placement, and what a job by Fretz. High point in the football, knowing he's going to be contacted and coming up and making a play. First down play. Holman breaking a couple of tackles inside the central 20 down to about the 18-yard line. Yeah, don't hold your breath. And they're wow. right back up on the ball running again. What a so catch by Fretz. And, and you got to give Wright credit to put that ball where he could, Fretz could go up and get it. But, hey, that's this is going to be the key. If, if Brian Wright can establish a pass game and have the defense start to respect him, this offense now becomes, you know, wide open again. Uh, tremendous job there. And with Fretz, you got guys that are going up and making plays like that. That really helps you, make you feel confident as a quarterback to get the ball out. Way in motion. They fake the pitch out. Going with the ball at the 10, at the 5. Flag is down as Yamir Knight goes into the end zone. This might come back. Yeah, let's see, Glenn. It's a hold. It's, yeah, it's going to say it's usually in the area of holding, it looked like. I could see that call right away. So that will back the Eagles up. Just under four minutes to go, scoreless game. Smyrna was inside the red zone. They were into the end zone there, but it'll all come back. Shame, yeah. It looked like they had uh, they had that play set up nice. Yeah. Wayne Knight, or um, Yamir Knight, apologies. He <laughs> definitely had the edge on that one, but um, in order to get fully around the corner, that receiver had to hold on a little too long there. Yeah, Yamir Knight, senior this year, Pat, the last Knight brother to come through this system. Coach Judy's had three of them. Yeah, what a family, right? What a what a what a brotherhood right there. You see right. That, those those three, these three have been tremendous, man. Will Wayne and now Yamir. Yep. Right takes the snap, hands it off to Holman, tries to get the edge, stiff arms a defender, and he got back to the twenty yard line. Decent blocking there, but again, you can see the Sussex Central defense, they can swarm. Uh, they, they're not they're not slow by any means. Yeah. Uh, they can set the edge as well, and they did a good job there of at least limiting the damage there and forcing a third down. Third. Looks like uh, Kearney's about in there. About four or five yards to go. Number 11. Way goes in motion, and now we've got somebody that jumped on the line of scrimmage. Get it again, Glenn. That's going to give Smyrna another first down, I believe. That's huge. 
Again, good hard count. Yeah, at the 15-yard line of Sussex Central. First and 10 for Smyrna. That's the situation there where I think they saw Ymir coming in motion and they were anticipating a speed sweep, right, a jet sweep. So when they heard the hard count right as Ymir is right by the center, they jumped. First down play. First and goal from the 10. Gway in motion. And they give the ball right up the middle. Breaking a couple of tackles. Strong run down to, I'm going to say the knee went down at the 10. Yeah, Holman, such a strong runner. He ended up at the 5, but they're going to say the knee touched down back at the 10. So he did pick up 5 yards from the 15 to the 10. It'll be second down and 5. Yeah, they got Kearney in there as well, the freshman, number 11. I mean, that, that sounds like that young man may be next in line here at Smyrna. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Yamir Knight's going to take the direct snap. Way in motion. Now he heads back. They fake the pitch oh, out again, job. but Chris Shields is right there. What a job by Shields. Glenn, he just went, blew up the A-gap, was unblocked, and there was nothing Yamir could do. I mean, he's one, he's one of the quickest, if not the quickest athlete in the state. He couldn't escape that one. Chris Shields had a good uh, short memory, didn't he, because they just ran that play for the touchdown that got called back. He yep. didn't get faked that time. No, he didn't. Loss on the play. Back at the 14, that's a four-yard loss. Now Wright's back in here, Glenn, yep. so they're going to spread the field out a little bit, give uh, give Central a little bit something extra to think about. Third and nine, takes the snap. Thos hits his receiver inside the 15, frets, but he'll go down at the 12. It's the right. It was the right read. Uh, you know, it's going to set up a fourth down here. They didn't quite get the first down, but that was the right read. Wanted to get the ball out. You don't want to take a sack. You don't want to let your lineman you know, end up holding on that situation to move you out of this. One of the Smyrna zone. assistant coaches, I believe it was the OC, Marks, was visibly upset that there wasn't a flag on that play. And now Smyrna will go for it on fourth down. Now this one, you got to get into the end zone here. Right. Holman alongside him. Right back to pass. Now he throws it up. In the corner of the end zone, Fretz goes up and gets it, but I don't know whether he got a foot down. I don't think he did. I'll tell you what, that's just great coverage out there. So Let's they give up was. on downs. I believe that's uh, 22. So that's tremendous coverage by Andrew Long out there. He, know, he knew that ball was beautifully placed, yeah. right? He wasn't going to get a hand on the ball. So the second thing you're thinking of is know where you're at on the field. Long knew where he was. Forced receiver out of bounds, and that's turnover on downs. Well done there by Sussex Central. Nice long drive by Smyrna. All the way, takes the clock all the way down to 57 seconds to go in the opening quarter. They went from their own 11-yard line all the way down to about the 10, and the drive stalls. Yeah, they go with a quick guard trap up the middle here, Glenn. Try and work their way out, get a little bit of space here. And you can see there's a little miscommunication on that Smyrna front. Guys were switching, not quite sure where the strong side was. And uh, that's, a, that's a great play for that kind of situation. And it netted them three yards. And that was uh, Malik Bell that time on the carry. Got a couple. A lot of guys on the Sussex Central offense will touch the ball tonight, Glenn. I know we highlighted that in the pregame. Yeah. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Second down and eight deep in their own end. They try to sweep to the far side and getting the edge and driven out of bounds up around the 15, maybe the 16-yard line was P.J. Henry. Yeah, and, and it looked like Henry had the edge, Glenn, but Makai Stinnett had different, he had a different viewpoint there, number 24 <laughs> in red. He did a great job of high, high tailing it to um, the sideline and cutting him down for only a two-yard gain. Yeah, he took a good angle that time and stopped Henry from getting the edge and go down the sideline. Stops the clock with just under 12 seconds to go in the quarter. D.J. Morris under center, the senior quarterback. And it's the crisscross, the counter crisscross, up the middle of the field across the 15, shy of the first down. That's, I mean, that's always a dangerous play. <laughs> my, uh, my head coach, Joe Hempel, always 
put, didn't put that in until playoff time <laughs> because he did not trust the double handoff. That yeah. was dangerous there. Central's and lucky. Especially where they were deep in their own <laughs> yeah. end. That's yeah. the final play of the first quarter. We are scoreless here. Number two, Smyrna against number three, Sussex Central. Back after this to start the second quarter on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. <laughs> I'm Chef Hari Cameron. At Grandpa Mac, pasta's our thing. We serve quality food fast that's not fast food. We make everything in-house and serve something for everyone. We're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Follow the noodle to Grandpa Mac. Glenn Fraser alongside Pat Gariante is back here at Charles V. Williams Stadium on our first state ortho game of the week. Mike Lang on camera. And for the most part, the rain hasn't been too bad here tonight, Pat. No, it, it hasn't, and, um, you know, hopefully that continues. It's a, it's a light drizzle down there, but both teams, you know, have been able to hold on to the football. Smyrna has been able to throw the ball yeah. with some pretty good accuracy so far. So, yeah, so far so good on the weather front. All right, so it'll be fourth down and five for the Golden Knights as we start the second quarter. That should put Steen back into punt formation, and barring some kind of penalty or turnover, Smyrna should come away with a good field position. Yes, they should, Glenn. McGuay's back deep. He's going to put his toes on the 50, or his heels on the 50. Steen standing at his own three-yard line. Takes a good snap. Pressure came late. Got a good hang time on this punt. This is a great punt. Takes a Sussex Central bounce into Smyrna territory and will be down near the Eagle 42-yard line. Tell you what, Glenn, given, given the field positioning there, that's about as good as you could do as a punter. He punted that ball with a spiral, came right back into the middle of the field, had a nice bounce with it. Well done right there by Steen. So far, Pat, two three and outs for Sussex Central. Great job by the Smyrna defense. Smyrna had that long run last time they had the ball, but couldn't punch it in. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, like we said, they, these both of these defenses are the strengths. I mean, we saw Smyrna a couple weeks ago against that high-potent Middletown offense hold them under wraps for most of the night, so not surprising there. Little flip to Holman, tries to get the edge, turns the corner at midfield, stiff arms a defender, and he's out at the Golden Knight 48-yard line, 47, excuse me. Nice job. Again, they kind of ran a similar play that we saw earlier to Ymir Knight. This time they give it to Holman, and he did get the edge. Was able to make some some things happen, pick up the uh, crucial first first down on this drive. Smarter goes quickly. Ymir Knight, Gway, and Fretz to the top of your screen. Fretz standing about three yards from the sideline. And Kamaj Kearney split to the bottom of your screen. And off the Holman, got a good block on the right side. He's a shifty runner. He cut on a dime, and he has another first down. Yeah, great job right there by Holman. His defensive end there on that far side got a little too far north into the backfield. He was unblocked. That's that's the challenge, right? You, you're unblocked. You think, I'm coming straight upfield. And Holman was able to dip up underneath him and, and bounce that thing outside. Got to try and stay tight to the lane there. Yeah. Let the running back make a decision. They got to move the chain gang because the officials did give Holman the first down yardage. Holman's ability to make that jump cut there in the middle of the field, that was just unbelievable. It's a great job by him. Special talent, Glenn. I mean, he's a special talent down there. That young All man. State uh, Class 3A last year with William Penn. Throw out into the flat. Complete good way. Breaks the tackle as another first down as he goes inside the Golden Knight 25-yard line. Yeah, this Smyrna offense starting to click a little bit, and I've been impressed so far early in this game by the senior quarterback, Brian Wright. Seems like he's earning more and more trust in this coaching staff week by week. He's come out, he's throwing the ball around with confidence, with accuracy, and it's making this offense even more dynamic. Down to the Golden Knight 24. Ymir Knight split to the bottom of your screen. Right back to throw, nice little out pattern. Fretz makes the catch and he's pushed out inside the 20. They're gonna mark him out, looks like around the 17 and a half. He's in a rhythm right now, Glenn, this young man, Brian Wright. I mean, you can see there he hit his third step on the drop back. 
came out, fired, took what the defense gave him. The hitch was there. You don't need to hit a home run every time. Picked up seven yards on first down. Well done. Well, I think you nailed it in the first quarter with that great leaping catch by Fretz. That kind of gave Wright a little bit more momentum and confidence. For sure. You know your guys are going to go up and make a play. Offensive line's giving him time to throw. Right at the stick, the catch made by Guay, but he's m hit immediately and driven out of bounds by Gabe Cannon. Yeah, it doesn't look like I, I, it's going to be just short. Nice job by Cannon coming up. It's the, the secondary's corners are definitely playing soft right now, so they're vulnerable to these quick hitches. Yeah. From the Golden Knight 15, third down and a yard. Right hands off to Holman, puts that helmet down and dives close to the 10. Nice job right there. Good push by the middle of that Smyrna offensive line. Gave him just enough for him to go by. This is good tackling team from Sussex Central, yeah. but the push was what really allowed him to get that first down. Pat, look at the personnel change here. I think we're going to see the earthquake formation now. Smyrna's been here before. The last drive they got down to the 11. It's a good call. Good, good catch by you there, Glenn. Yeah, wholesale changes, getting some, some athletes on the field, some defensive linemen out there to lead yep. block. See so if it if it nets some success. In the backfield, you have Yaya Knight and Holman. Knight takes it, cuts it back, gets inside the five, and he puts his head down, and he's in the end zone. Wow. Wow, how did he stay on his feet, Clint? I don't know, but he goes in from 11 yards out, and there's the first points of the game. I don't know how he was able to stay on his feet, but what a job there by Knight. Low center of gravity, kept the feet churning, and the first score of the game going to the Eagles. And that personnel grouping will stay out there for the two-point try. This is big. We talked about this right here being, yeah. being a potential key. I have uh, the infamous Andy Walter next to me up here in the press box from Bay to Bay uh, News Media. And uh, I, I thought maybe my monitor here might be blocking his view of the goal line, so I'm telling him, just, just watch the monitor. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Knight takes the snap, tries to scoot in, and he is in for the two-point try. Timeout on the field with 9.33 to go in the first half. And the score is Smyrna 8 and Sussex Central nothing. Unless you have a replay here. All right, we'll uh, take step aside for a commercial break. We'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Solo. Good Fraser, Pat Gariante is back here for our game of the week, our first state ortho game of the week. And so far, it has been stellar defense by both teams. Smyrna finally putting points on the board as they are up eight to nothing. And their defense has pretty much shut down the wing T run attack so far from the Golden Knights, forcing two, three and out, Pat. Yeah, well, you know, that front seven, that front eight of Smyrna, we talked about how special those guys are. And they're getting after it right now. Um, you know, they're. We haven't seen any passes from Sussex Central yet, so keep an eye out for that. Is that's, that's a, a penalty? Little squib kick that went out of bounds. I thought maybe one of the upbacks from Central might have got a hand on it, but apparently not. So the Golden Knights have the option here to make Smyrna kick it again, or take it at the 35. Let's see what they elect to do. Well, they already have the offense out there. They're going to take the ball at the 35-yard line. Well, there you have it. But yeah, I mean, you, you, they've. Smyrna's been able to stop the run. Let's see if they go to some play action off of this. You know, that that kind of worked for them against William Penn. Um, so the Central going to have to figure something out now down 8 nothing. So from the 35-yard line, the Golden Knights with their third offensive series of the ball game. And then the other, they, they looks like they're going to get this on the right hash. Okay. 
Got a wide out in a slot at the bottom. And a single wing to the near side. Back to pass. T.J. Morris looks middle of the field. Jump ball, and it couldn't quite get both hands on it. That was Steen, the intended receiver, incomplete. There you go. He called for it, right, Glenn? Mm -hmm. They could come right out. They go play action pass with the waggle. Great coverage there by Smyrna. And he had, he had to force the issue there yeah. on Steen on the crossing route. Linebackers were right there. He ended up make, you know, making it, getting it to his receiver, but yeah. just a little too far out in front of him. But I like we, we've we've seen Steen have some really good games so far this year. Against the Lazy Anim, he did. Against William Penn, he had a phenomenal game. Absolutely. But I think that's just going to be the key for Central. they got to be balanced offensively here. Long wing back right pitch out. Sweep going to the far side of the field to Bell. And Bell gets a couple of yards, maybe three. So it'll be third down and seven. Yeah, Smyrna doing a great job against this running game. Uh, right now that seems to be the focus and – they're doing a good job. They're, they're seeing it early. You know, the key, I know I've said this in previous broadcasts when we've done Sussex Central games, the key to the wing tee is following those guards. Yeah. Right. They're going to tell you which way the ball is going. Smyrna's doing a good job of not getting caught off guard by the misdirection going on in the backfield. They're following the guards, and it's leading them to the football. Got a halftime score for you. Delmar leading Woodbridge 27-14, to 14, and I think it was Lake Forest 14-3 to 3 over Sussex Tech. 14-13, tight one there. Back to pass again. Pressure's coming. Hit from behind. Fumble, fumble. Fumble. Ball is recovered. I, I don't know. Cole I Moyer's down Moyer. there. He might have it. Nope. Nope. It was a central player that got back on it. It was the lineman, Wyatt Hellens. Great. Good job. Good hit that. from behind, yeah. though, and I think that hit was put on by Steven Truck Driver. Hey, great job by driver from behind, and there was a danger zone right there for Sussex Central and T.J. Morris. Not a whole lot to do. And once again, big time stop by this Eagle defense. Loss of about eight yards. So it brings up fourth and long. Steen in to punt again. So three consecutive three and outs for Sussex Central with 7.45 to go first half. High snap, Steen goes up and gets it. Pressure coming in late. Gets a high punt off. He gets a lot of hang time. Hitting at midfield and takes a Smyrna bounce to the Golden Knight 47-yard line. Good field position for the Eagles, and they have the lead, 8 to nothing. Yeah, they got to be feeling good right now. Uh, they're definitely in a good situation. 7.34 to go now. That Central's going to get the ball coming out of the half, so. Right. You know, putting together a, a little drive here, scoring before the half, going up two scores, kind of a little bit of a safety net yeah. uh, for you to have a lead in, in the second half. Brian Wright in the gun. Holman to his right. Two receivers top and bottom of your screen. Hands off to Holman. Got a good initial block on the left side, and this surges forward down close to the 41. Good read there by Holman. Uh, Yamir Knight was out there blocking the outside linebacker, and he wasn't quite sure where the, the outside linebacker was going to go, and Holman made the right cut, and he got upfield, put the foot in the, in the, in the turf, and got upfield for six yards. Second down play for the Eagles. Right, doing the hand clap. Two-step drop, looks to pass, throws it way downfield, and intercepted. Yep. And that is intercepted it. inside the 15-yard line. Steen. Reef Steen, again, I, I believe that might be his third or fourth interception of the season. Yeah, he's, just in, he's in great positioning there. That's, that's a tough window on a cover two right there, right? He, you're you're going to have to really fit that ball in to the sideline side where only your guy could get it. He missed a little deep into the inside, and that allowed the safety Steen to come over. He got the foot in, interception turnover right there. Um, at that potentially turning point here for Sussex Central. Let's see if they can move the ball against this defense. But yeah. so far they, they've uh, they, they've done a good job of, uh, of keeping themselves in the game so far on the defensive side of the ball. I have to say if you're right and that lights a fire into the Golden Knights offense from their own 14-yard line. It was right up the middle, crossing the 15 to the 16 as they unfile. That was Bell. He got a couple. Uh, Chris Kearney on the tackle, number 44. 
came in yep. and tripped him up. CJ, they call him here at Smyrna High, CJ Kearney. By the way, uh, I'm told that if Brandon West would get a sack in the game, that will give him 20 for his career. He's only a junior, and that would make him number one all time on Smyrna's sack list, passing Hunter Moyer, whose younger brother Cole is playing out there right now. How about that? Be quite the accomplishment if he's able to do it. Let's see. Right now he's not on the field. Give. Bouncing it to the outside. Smyrna defense there. A minimal gain. Maybe two yards up close to the 20. Tried to sweep that time. Good. It's long. Andrew Long. It looks like West is, is trying to get loose over here on the sidelines. We'll see if he gets back out there. Here you go, this is big third down here, Glenn. Central's got to get something going right now. If they can find a way to get this first down, at the very least, you're turning some more clock, keeping that smart offense off the field. Yep, third down and about four. Hard cadence. Give the ball off the left side, and I don't know, it's all going to depend on the spot. That's uh, on the carry that time is Shields. They're going to hurry up on the ball, Glenn. They want to go and catch Smyrna off, off guard. This is big right here, fourth and inches. Yep. Watch the hard count. Now they go with a quick count. Off the right side, easily getting the first down yardage. All the way out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Shields. So Great Shields, job. two consecutive carries. And that's a great job by that offensive group, knowing what they wanted to do. They had that play call ready to go. They were lined up right away. Didn't allow Smyrna to get, you know, their feet dug in. And uh, they, they powered through for a big time first down. That's the best run of the night for them. It is. It's the longest play of the game for the Golden Knights and their first first down. Shields takes the pitch out. They're trying to sweep along the far sideline. He get across the 40, maybe about the 42-yard line, maybe the 43. You see where they mark him out. 43. Once Pick up a five. Another another great job blocking and back-to-back -back positive plays there. And five yards on first down. That's, Glenn, that's keeping you right in rhythm. Uh, let's see if this Sussex Central offense can get into a consistent rhythm now. Well, I think you're right. I think, you, I think that turnover, that INT, has perked them up. You see it. I mean, you can see it from them. Well, they're starting to win the line of scrimmage a little bit. Back to pass. They got them. Morris. Throws it downfield, underthrows his man. He makes the catch at the Eagle 38 and gets inside the 35-yard line. And I think it was P.J. Henry. It was. Yeah, great job on the wheel route by Henry. Oh, uh, uh, flag on the play, Glenn. I think we may have a hold. I think we may have a hold here. Yeah, it's all the way back in where Morris would have thrown the ball oh, in the pocket. That's, that's tough, man. Yeah. So that's. It was a great job on the wheel route, both defenders went with the inside receiver and I'll tell you what it was severely underthrown but it actually yeah. worked out better it worked for out Morris great because if he let him the safety was going to peel off and potentially knock that ball away um, having said that I'm breaking down a play that n didn't really count now because of the hold that's tough spot foul from the 34 yard line so it goes back to the 28 and they need to get, I think, to the Smyrna 47 for a first down. Yes. Big penalty. Second down and a green mile. <laughs> Four minutes to go in this opening half. 8 nothing. Eagles on top. P.J. Henry comes in motion. Oh, oh, and he tripped and went down. And you didn't have to hit him. He was already down. <laughs> There's Brandon West coming down there and falling on the quarterback who lost his footing. I think he just got caught in the turf. Yeah, or his lineman stepped back on him there. That's, ah, oh man, two tough back-to-back -back plays here for Sussex Central. But there you go. It's good to see West back on the field. Saw him down here on the sidelines trying to get stretched out. Hadn't played yet in this series. It's good to see him back out there. So now it's third down, and as you said, it's longer than a green mile now. Ball on their own 25-yard line. They need to get all the way out to their own 48 for the first down. Well, you know what's coming here, Glenn. It's, it's waggle. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Rolls near side. Morris does. Pressure's coming from Cole Moyer. He unloads it and is picked off. 
picked off by Corey Williams. And Williams returns it to the 21-yard line. And there's a, there's a penalty marker here thrown after the play. Great job. That, that was Moyer on the pass rush. And like you said, Williams coming right across, high pointing that football, coming up with a big time interception on what was just, I need to chuck it and duck it right there. That was a chuck and duck right there by the quarterback, Morris. And it turned into a turnover. I think the flag came after the INT. Not quite sure. I don't Illegal know that's block a, on uh, yeah. Smyrna, I believe. Yeah, after the INT. Defenseless receiver, not sure, but. Three minutes to go with the clock stopped here in this first half. So that backs the Eagles up from, they would have been at the 21 of the Golden Knights. Now they are out at the 37 yard line. See what they come up with here, Glenn. Looks like uh, Ymir Knight's gonna be in, taking a direct snap. Has two running backs behind him. Now he will step back into the gun, Holman alongside of him. They fake the pitch out again. This time it comes left side. He broke a couple of tackles, still on his feet. I don't know how, but he's all the way down inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. Glenn, I don't know how he did this either. And we'll, we'll take a moment here for the instant replay. I mean, you can see here, just an instant cut right in the middle of the field here. There's one juke, somehow broke through that one. Yeah. And he sneaks down the field for wow. a big time first down into the red zone. 18 yards, good job on the replay, Pat. Man in motion. And now look, we've had some jumping and movement on the line of scrimmage. Another five yard penalty against the Golden Knights. This will put the ball inside the 15, down at the 14 yard line. It'll be first down and five. As you said, big time opportunity here for Smyrna. Again, Sussex Central set to receive the second half kickoff. To go up two scores into the break, you'd be feeling really good about yourself. Phoenix Enriquez, a freshman, number 17, the wide out in the slot to the bottom of your screen. He goes in motion. Now Knight runs the quarterback sweep that way, cuts it back against the grain. He's inside the 10, very close to a first down. Yeah, this is uh, going to depend on the spot here, Glenn. Uh, but nice cutback. He yeah. did a great job reading, reading his blockers there. He did not have the edge, that's for sure. Now they're going earthquake, Glenn. You see the... Yep, here comes the personnel change. They bring in the three defensive linemen er, and, and Cole Moyer, a linebacker. Yeah. It's second down and short. Yeah, I guess right now you just got to determine who's going to get the ball here. Is it number eight or number seven? Nazir Jenkins and Cole Moyer, two defensive players, are the upbacks. Knight takes a snap, looks to go straight ahead, easily has the first down yardage as they move the pile down to the five. Still on his feet. Shoo. <laughs> Letting that one go. Late whistle, Glenn. huh? Letting that one go. Now first and goal, minute 17 to go. He got all three timeouts left for Coach Judy. And Looks I think like they're going to take, take one. one now. Yep, and we'll step aside with him. A minute 17 to go in the opening half. Smyrna 8, Sussex Central nothing. Eagles knocking on the door. Back after this. Ferris on Kirkwood Highway. So I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. I would back here at Smyrna High School, Charles V. Williams Stadium. It's 
First down and goal for Smyrna at the Golden Knights five yard line. Already up eight to nothing. Looking to add to that. Heading into the locker room. Jameer yeah. Knight. Yeah, I mean it's and good. Holman. I'm sorry, Holman and Knight in the backfield. And you know sometimes they direct snap it to Holman too. Yeah, it's it's. We'll see where they go with this one, Glenn. It was Jameer Knight last time. He takes a snap, cuts it back against the grain, and walks into the end zone untouched. For a five-yard touchdown that increases Smyrna's lead to 14 to nothing. There it is again. Yeah, it's just too easy there. There was there was nobody coming from the weak side of the field there, and tremendous cut there by Knight, finding the open lane, scoring a touchdown. That's a big score there for yeah. Smyrna. Push this lead so out to two scores. Out of the earthquake, Pat, they've run that play about three times now, where he starts to go right on a sweep, and then he just sees the hole and cuts it back. You know, it's fascinating to me for years. Ever since you know Coach Judy started doing that back in 2015, it's you think it's predictable. Yeah. You think, oh, I see, they're not going to pass out of it, and it still can it cannot be stopped. It you know, there are other teams using that formation now. I know Woodbridge uses it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Knight took with a, <laughs> a hard cadence with the clap, and that drew the Golden Knights offside. I think that's the fourth time they've been caught offsides. Yeah, and you know, this is this is bizarre to see from the Sussex Central team, right? They're usually extremely well disciplined. They don't they don't shoot themselves in their own foot. They've been highly penalized here in this first half. And yeah. uh you know, that's been definitely been one of the difference makers in this game. So now from a yard and a half out, the two point try. Holman takes a direct snap. He puts the helmet down and he walks in standing up for the two-point conversion. It's a big boy right there, Glenn. There's really not no. much Central could do on that one. Holman's just running through people there. 16 to nothing now. The Eagles on top with 1.12 to go in the half as we keep it right here. And once again, we have a couple other games on our network of crews tonight for Delaware Live and 302 Sports. Benny Mitchell and the Southern crew were at the half at Woodbridge with Delmar on top of the Blue Raiders, 27 to 14. And then I don't know what's going on upstate. The upstate crew has Red Lion and Milford, and uh, Pat has an update on that. Yeah, right now, Red Lion well in control of that one, 22 to nothing, Glenn, approaching halftime. Okay. And we just had the Red Lion coachings, coaches and uh, football players on our weekly show from Buffalo Wild Wings in Middletown this past Wednesday. Yeah, it looked like a great show, and Glenn. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's good to to see that uh, that program, you know, trying to trying to pick themselves up, build themselves back up. They were a playoff team last year, extremely young this year, and maybe they're starting to have some things click with with some of these youngsters over there. Um, it's exciting, man. Buttinger, he's a he's a really intriguing prospect, yeah. the freshman quarterback down there. Here's the kickoff, a little squib kick down the center of the field, picked up inside the 35 and across the 40 out to the 42-yard line. And on the return was Ivan Neal. Yeah, nice job by Neal, just taking what, taking what you could get. So not known as a quick strike offense. Let's see what uh, Coach Wells and the Golden Knights do here with just 65 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, this is not ideal if you're a wing T offense, right? You don't like being down multiple scores, uh, especially late in the game. Um, so now all this does is it you need to ratchet up your um, effectiveness. You need to make sure that there's no mistakes made. you got to be extremely efficient as an offense now through the rest of this game. Long in motion. He gets the football, makes a couple of good jump cuts, and makes a nice run as he's stopped just shy of midfield. A good six, seven yard run on first down. That, that'll that work. And there's a timeout. Now you'll see, you'll see the timeout's called. Yeah, the first one taken by uh, coach, head coach Wells and Sussex Central and stops the clock with just under 53 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Now, tomorrow we're going to come right back downstate here in the center part of the state, and we're going to have the Civil War, the rivalry game between Dover and Caesar Rodney. They first played the game in 1935, played continuously since 1961, and uh, thanks to my historian, Andy Walter, from Bay to Bay Media, he updated me today. Uh, Dover leads the series, 37 wins, 30 losses, and there have been four ties. How about that? That's, I mean, it's that's historically been a good matchup there, Glenn. And, 
uh, and this year you're starting to see some of the fruits of the labor be, um, you know, then start to reap the benefits of that. Well, yeah, I think you just said the key word moments ago when you talked about Sussex Central and discipline. He has brought discipline to that program. Yep. And for Cesar Rodney, they're a question mark to me. I, a, a once very proud uh, program that is riding a 16-game losing streak. I, and I would believe that's probably the longest losing streak in the history of the school. Yeah, there was, was a, a penalty flag yeah. before the timeout. It was unsportsmanlike against uh, Smyrna. Um, not quite sure what, what happened. Not sure when it happened, but no. 15 yards. And now this, this really yeah. helps Sussex Central out. Yeah, that'll help their offense trying to get in the end zone or maybe at least getting points on the board. They have two timeouts left, 55 seconds to go. Fakes the handoff, throws down the far sideline, and juggled and intercepted by Smyrna. It's intercepted by number 12, Eric Spears. He circled Spears. around the end zone. He's all the way out across oh. the 30, and he is pounded by Malik Bell out of bounds near the 35. Yeah, Bell seen him and wasn't going to let any more return happen there. That's a tough one. And you can see Morris, he, he wound up. He wanted to take a shot there, but you know, it's a wet ball. You know, there's a little bit of wind. Perhaps he tried to adjust for the wind. He just overthrew that one, and it sailed down the field. The easy interception there uh, for Spears, and, and quite a return as well. Yeah. All right, so now the Eagles have the ball back with just under 39 seconds to go in the half, up 16 to nothing. Ryan Wright flanked by Holman in the backfield. This is where Smyrna, a lot of times, this is where they're even more dangerous. Quick strike. Back to pass is right. Throws in the near flat. I think that pass is complete. It is to Yamir Knight, and he got that bounce to stop the clock. Yeah, great job by Yamir getting the foot down. In fact, he got both feet down. Let's see what they can do. They got to be quick here. They got to be efficient in the passing game. You see Coach Judy and company, they're, they're going for it here, Glenn. Yeah. They're not. They're not satisfied. Second down for the Eagles. And now we have a timeout. Central wants to, Coach Wells want to talk this thing over. Yep, that'll be the second timeout taken by the Golden Knights. They have one left. Yeah, I mean, you, well, you, you definitely don't want to give up another score. No. You definitely don't want to. So, you know, you, you don't get to carry them timeouts over into the second half. So I like this by Sussex Central. Keep this thing where it's at right now. Don't allow this to get you out of hand right here. Uh, you're going to get the ball coming out of the half. You do not want to give up a quick strike with under yeah. a minute to go. Yeah, we talked uh, just a moment ago about our game tomorrow. That's a noon kickoff from Dover High. But we'll be on the air around 11.45 with a pregame show. And that will complete four games by Delaware Live Sports mm -hmm. on the weekend when uh, – Hurricane, or now Tropical Storm, Ian, is knocking on the door here in the state of Delaware. The outer bands are already hitting the lower part of the state. It's insane, man. It's just like yesterday, I felt oh. like I was seeing the devastation that was going that on down in Florida. Florida was just, oh. looked like bombs went off in certain places. That's a shame. Uh, you never Sanibel Island, good Lord. Yeah. No way in and out of there now except by boat or helicopter. It's crazy. It was it, honestly some of the videos I seen like yeah. that from like the ring doorbells or <laughs> the outdoor cameras, like the storm surges. It's just mm. extremely powerful storm. Yeah, our thoughts and prayers, best Absolutely. wishes going out to everybody in the, uh, down in Florida. Right back to pass, steps up in the pocket. He's had time to move up in the middle of the pocket. He has to scramble with it, and he ends up getting about three or four yards. And now a timeout taken by Smyrna, I would think. Well, and that's one right there. Okay, yeah, Brian Wright's a senior. You're exactly right. But game experience, right? That's got to have the feel. He did a great job stepping up in the pocket. That's exactly what you're taught. The only thing that you'd like to see from him right there is when you recognize you don't have anything, have that clock in your head. Get rid of the football. You got yeah. guys running down the sideline, so just throw it out of bounds down the sideline. You're not going to get an intentional grounding on that if there's a receiver in the area. Pat, we'll have to see if Sussex Central makes a defensive adjustment in the locker room at halftime. But I've noticed, it seems like the last four or five passes, when Wright's going back, he stepped up. The offensive line is pushing the defenders away and opening up the middle of the field for him. So he has a great view downfield. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a textbook, right? You're creating such a nice pocket when you do that. Um, but you're right. That's something that Sussex Central's got to 
fight. You got to fight upstream. You can't yeah. allow them to just dictate where you're going. Somebody's got to stand in the middle there. That middle pass rush is so important a lot yeah. of times, Glenn. Both teams only with one timeout left now. Just under 27 seconds to go in the half. Coming up at the halftime, we'll hear from our awesome sponsors that bring you Delaware Live football games every week. And we'll also, I believe, we'll run top plays for you. We will. We will have top plays in week three. There's a snap right back to pass. Pressure's coming, trying to set up the screen, middle of the field. Catch is made at the 43. Across midfield, good juke move. That's Holman, and he's pushed out of bounds at the Golden Knight 30-yard line. What Holman with yards after the catch. What a job by Holman. I'll tell you what, key block right there by Evan Blauer. He had a, a defender, I believe it was Dorsey, right on the doorstep about to tackle Holman for a loss, and he got a chip of him, and that's what sprung him. That goes for about 27 yards. Great play call, too. 16 seconds to go in the half. And I believe a timeout in hand. Yep. So you can get creative here. Right. Two steps, throws the out pattern. Pass complete, but the clock's running, and Smyrna will take their final timeout. The ball is down around the 27-yard line. Great job of Brackett in that coverage there by Central protecting the sideline not allowing Knight to get out of bounds and, and uh, forcing Smyrna to burn their final time out. And now you got to think that Smyrna is going to take a shot at the end zone right here. So, you know, it becomes a little bit predictable here if you're Sussex Central's defense. That's a great job right there on that. That was a big play right there. Yeah. Big play right there. Keeping him at bounds, sure. But, yeah, Glenn, we'll have the uh, week three top ten plays. Uh, like you said, message from our sponsors also have some halftime stats as well. And, We'll get you updated yeah. with some scores from around the state. That we will. There's a lot of a lot of good football being played. A lot of games had to get moved up yeah. yep. because of weather. So um, we'll have some second-half scores, I'm sure. Well, that Red Lion Milford game started at 645. The Delmar Woodbridge game started at 6. There were a couple other games that started at 6. I think Seaford and IR started at 5 o'clock. I think that's a final. I think that game's a final right now. What we'll, 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 again, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get you updated at halftime. Half time. Yep. All right, here we go. The stadium clock now showing 10 seconds. Second down and six from the 27-yard line of the Golden Knights. Smyrna trying to add to their 16-0 advantage. Need good pass blocking here if you're the Eagles. Right. Looks near sideline. Throws it. Leaping catches made getting a foot in. Nah, but then he, he was hit and dropped the ball. That was almost an outstanding play by Kearney. Kamaj Kearney. What a job by Kamaj Kearney. Okay, yeah, okay. He didn't get the foot down. That's fine. But my Lord, what a catch. They were the freshman to go up and grab it. Yeah, and he just got knocked out there. Again, the second time Sussex Central defender has done a great job of, okay, I can't get a play on the ball, but I know the sideline's near me. Yeah. Get the receiver out. It's just as good as a, a pass deflection. All right, now five seconds to go in the half. This has got to go to the end zone. Blitz was coming up the middle, was picked up by Blauer. Throwing the far in the near flat is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. I don't know whether he would have in, been in bounds anyhow. Right. Seven tenths of a second, percent. fourth down. This should be the half, barring a penalty. How about that? He <laughs> point seven, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now Not you're right. That. This one probably does have to go into the end zone. Yeah, you can gather, right? Yeah, you can gather and put the shot up at the buzzer here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't need to tip it. You can catch and shoot. No, it's basketball season. That weather starts to change a little bit, Glenn. I mean, yeah. it's not that far away. If you could I know, that. it's not. It's crazy. Tomorrow we're in the month of October. It's a great month. All right, right back to pass. Rolls far side. Now he, he scrambles a little bit, steps up, throws it downfield. It's caught. At the five and tackled right there was Kamaj Kearney, and that will bring us to the end of the half, Pat. Andrew Long, great job securing the tackle. Nice job by Wright, buying himself some time, stepping up, found Kearney, and now it's okay. Who's going to make a play? Kearney's trying to shake loose. Great work right there by Andrew Long, the secondary player, securing the tackle and getting the Sussex Central team to the half, only down two scores. That was a 22-yard pass play. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. 
our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 302- 2239-4822. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor, helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, strong service. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted. Adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges. BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry, giving our customers the advantages they need right now. Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution, free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. And now it's time for your Delaware Live Sports Top Plays of the Week, brought to you by BSN Sports. Let's get started at number 10 with Jaden Wheeler and Elijah Husser from that Middletown Apo game last week. Check out Jaden Wheeler like a rocket from the linebacker position right through the hole, makes the tackle for a loss for the Cavaliers. Then to the other side, now for Apo. They got the big fella in the backfield leading the way. Check out that pancake from the fullback position. Elijah Husser clearing a path there for Apo at number 10. Now we've in the state of Delaware. This one is a game-winning attempt to beat St. George's from 35 yards out. It is up and through the uprights. Sallies gets the win as time expires, and Bill DiNardo gets his 300th win. Congratulations, coach. Now over to number six, and Howard, one of the more impressive teams we've seen in 2A all year long. It's Xavier Greer. Here comes the pressure. Albero out of the pocket, finds Greer, who takes it the other way, has some blocking up ahead of him. 10-5 into the end zone for the pick six for Xavier Greer at number six. On to number five, this one courtesy of Woodbridge. It's Cotton C.J. Collins. He's going to do it on the defensive side of the ball. Ball is on the floor, but not for long. Collins able to pick it up. It's a scoop and score for him. He's going to take it the rest of the way. 80 yards for the Woodbridge touchdown right there at number five. 
on the number four. Some long touchdown passes here. It gets started with Chris Albero to Hagenberg from Archmere. This against Howard. There's Hagenberg. Makes the catch at the 45. And check out the yards after the catch. Makes the defender miss. Now has some blockers in front of him. He's going to reverse field back to the 20-10 and into the end zone. He goes. One of two plays here at number four. Now over to Middletown. Austin Troyer to Tyreen Hinson from Middletown. Hinson finds a hole in the defense. Able to come back, make the catch, and then see you later. He's going to put the speed to the sideline. Has a blocker out in front of him as well. And he's all the way into the end zone. Two big plays there at number four. Over to number three. We'll stay with Middletown. And how about Mikey Pearson? You know him as a running back. Here he is going to do it on special teams. They punt it to him. Going to field it at about the 13. And just finds a crease right up the middle. There goes the speed. Bye-bye, Mikey Pearson. The punt return for a touchdown. That one good for 85 yards in the Cavaliers' win over Apoquinimic. Now over to number two. This one cur courtesy of the Hudson camera. It's Rayon White-Taylor. He's from William Penn. He's going to do it on both sides of the ball. This one loose. Here he comes on defense. He scoops it up, and he is gone the other way. Camera can't even keep up with the speed as he takes it all the way for the Colonials for six on the defensive side. Now we're going to jump to offense where he's going to do something similar here as he gets the jet sweep out of the shotgun, and he's going to get to the sideline. There's that speed. Goodbye, White Taylor. Will he even be touched? A little bit there at the end, but into the end zone. Two big plays for White Taylor at number two. And that'll take us to number one. A huge win for Apo Soccer. Here's how they got it. Thomas Hastings from the corner kick gets ahead on it, finds the back of the net for the goal. But you got to play defense as well if you want to beat the top team in the country. Here's Riley Busby saving the PK and Apoquinimic gets the win over Sally's in soccer. Both of those plays, your top plays of the week. I'm Chef Hari Cameron. At Grandpa Mac, pasta's our thing. We serve quality food fast that's not fast food. We make everything in-house and serve something for everyone. We're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Follow the noodle to Grandpa Mac. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live, our state, our news, our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 Two two three nine four eight two two. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor, helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, strong service. Our Gaelic team locations, which provide both surgical and non-surgical treatment for a variety of orthopedic conditions, 
and they're specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. They serve as team physicians for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Their docs are readily available to all the local emergency departments, medical aid, and urgent care centers for consult and treatment. Call them at 302-322-3400 or visit FirstStateOrtho.com. Be sure to mention you saw their ad here on Delaware Live Sports. Game of the week at 16 to nothing. Smyrna at the half. They scored all their points in the second quarter. It was an 11-yard run by Yamir Knight. Yamir Knight ran in the two-point try. That came at 9.33 of the second quarter. And then just about a minute and 10 to go in the half. It was Yamir Knight again on a five-yard run. Holman ran in the two-point try, and that's the score at the half, 16 to nothing. Let's take a look at our unofficial stats for the first half before we go to some other scores around the state. And, uh, Pat, I'll let you do the team numbers, and then I'll run down some individual stats. Yeah, you can see dominating first half here by Smyrna. Um, you know, we, we talked about this running game for Sussex Central, right? That was going to be the key for them. Eh, 46 yards, you, you want a little bit more than that. But the passing game, haven't been able yeah. to get that going. And um, as you can see on the other side there, Smyrna's really done a great job. I got I got to give credit to Brian Wright. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's come out here. He's thrown the ball around, especially early in this game. He was accurate. He was on time. 135 passing yards in yeah. the first half for that young man. So, tremendous job. And they've also gotten the job done on the ground, dominating up front over Central. Uh, 213 to 46 in, in regards to that. And then you look at the turnover battle. Two to one, two interceptions for Central in the air. They haven't thrown many passes, and when they have, they've been intercepted. Smyrna did throw one. They do have that one turnover, but mm -hmm. they played a pretty clean football game. Uh, leading the way on the ground for Sussex Central was Shields, five carries and 26 yards. And you can tell that's over half of the team total mm -hmm. in the first half. For Smyrna, leading the way on the ground, 10 carries, 40 yards for Holman. Five carries, 35 yards for Yamir Knight in the two touchdowns. And you mentioned Wright, 12 out of 17, good numbers for yeah. a buck 35 and just a one pick. And the receivers a as a whole have done a pretty good job making some acrobatic uh, catches. Nolan Fretz with that one that we had the replay of, that that probably should make one of our plays of the week next week. That was a heck of a catch. Yeah, and we'll, we'll bring it up right here, Glenn. I mean, you could see it. I mean, it was a beautifully placed football, and Fretz just went up and made a play. Yeah tremendous job early in this game it's kind of set the tone for this one Glenn and um, you know they've been making plays like that through the air I've been nothing but impressed by Brian Wright today good job on the replay by Pat R Pat and uh, of course a good camera work by Mike Lang to capture that one for you and again yeah you might see that one on our top plays next week we have a whole half yet to go here Sussex Central will receive the opening kick to start the second half. Let's take a look at some uh, scores from around the state. Couple of finals, DMA 27, McCain 14. Indian River edges Seaford, and the Blue Jays lose for the first time this year, 21 to 20 in that one. Uh, just before halftime, Caravel leading Concord 35 to nothing. In the third quarter at Sussex Tech, 26-14 over Lake Forest. Red Lions shutting out Milford 22 nothing at the half. And Delmar just running away with the Kiwanis Trophy game down at Bridgeville, 41 to 14 over Woodbridge in the fourth quarter. Delmar looking for their second straight win, and Salesianum and Hudson Votech were scoreless at the end of one. And uh, Middletown, we got to give them some credit. They were only down 13 to 12 out there at Paul Brown Stadium in Ohio to Washington High. It's now 21 to 12. There was only about 13 seconds to go in the half. So Middletown. Uh, hanging around against a uh, national power and doing it uh, good for them, though, to get uh, the experience of playing in an NFL stadium. That's got to be awesome, man. That's got to be great, Glenn. And right up fresh off of a Thursday night football victory for the, the Bengals. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's really neat, man, to go down there and, and get to play. And and, now, and you're competing? I'll tell yeah. you what, Coach Blum's got to be happy with his group, and those kids are having the experience of a lifetime, that's for sure. Just about ready to start the second half. Both teams have returned to their respective sidelines. I want to give a little a couple of shout-outs here to uh, one to Roger Hall in the IT department here at Smyrna High for uh, helping us out with our Wi-Fi and our Internet tonight. As uh, I think it's been pretty much glitch-free here tonight from Smyrna High, Pat. Yeah, no, I mean, it, I mean, it's it's been uh, it's been great. Um, you know, we always like coming down here and working in yeah. Smyrna. These guys do it first class, and um, yeah, we've we've uh, we've had it. Had it pretty good. So fingers crossed. Obviously, <laughs> technology 
is very unpredictable. <laughs> so hopefully we have a clean second half as well um, as the as the rain starts to come down just a, a slight bit heavier here in the second yeah. half. And the wind is uh, still pretty brisk, blowing pretty is. much uh, from our a crosswind from the Smyrna sideline across to the Sussex Central sideline. Shout out too to uh, Athletic Director Bill Schultz for all of his help. Uh, he always does a great job here, and uh, yes he's he a does. pretty pretty pa proud uh, athletic father too, as his daughter is on Smyrna's volleyball team, who's undefeated and ranked number two in our rankings, and they're good. Mike Lang seeing them in action. Uh, oh, and Mike's our volleyball guy. Him and Jay. Uh, they are the volleyball gurus for sure. So if he if he says you're really good, <laughs> <laughs> you're really good. Trust me, because there's been a lot of great volleyball that's been played in the state of Delaware through the years. Yeah. And these guys have, have seen a lot of it. All right. Sussex Central will receive the kickoff to start this third quarter. And it, it's getting just a little more difficult, I think, to uh, put a passing attack together. Uh, weather conditions are deteriorating. Well, that's it, Glenn. I mean, if we had to, to circle um, you know, a key to the second half for Central, I think that's going to be it. you got a goose egg right now in the passing game. Yeah. Uh, I do think you got to try and, and balance it out a little bit here because this Smyrna defense, their run blitzing is just it's, it's just been great up front. Central hasn't had an answer for them. Now, you got, you're got kind of smaller mm -hmm. on the offensive line compared to these, these guys on that Smyrna defensive line. Mixing in a few passes, I think – it's going to be key to, to get Morris some confidence here. He hasn't thrown the ball often, and he does have the two interceptions. Maybe some quick hitters um, to get the, this passing game going a little bit. Uh, that's going to be a key, I, I feel like, here in the second half for this Central team. Smyrna, you keep doing what you're doing. There's really not a whole lot of adjustments that they need to make, to be yeah. completely honest with you. Like you said, right. I mean, Wright's put yep. 12 to 17. I mean, that's – that's elite numbers right now against <laughs> a really good defensive team. Honestly, man, that's yeah. He's almost on pace for 300 yards. There's the kickoff, bobbled a little bit. Now they just fall on it inside the 30, down around the 28-yard line. So the Golden Knights will start from there. Effective little squib kick. Well, that's been a staple down here. Yeah. Glenn, uh, under Coach Mike Judy, they they like to kick these squibs and. Um, I'll tell you what, I know uh, when I was coaching at Del Castle, we were on the receiving end of a few of those where <laughs> you just, you know, guys aren't used to fielding them. And um, yeah, he puts a lot of pressure on, on a special teams unit. Yeah. Make sure you receive these things properly. That's Joshua Michael, the kicker for the Smyrna Eagles. I don't see how the Golden Knights have made any halftime adjustments to get this offense on track. Misdirection, give right up the middle. It's the guard trap. I mean, that's a staple of the wing T offense. Try and establish some middle ground there. Try and hold the linebackers because uh, they like to get going sideline to sideline when you see that motion looking for sweep. A lot of times you could sneak hit them on that guard trap. Um, so Coach Wells right off the jump, nice four yards on, on first down and see if they can establish uh, a run game and then do the play action off of the run. That was Chris Shields on the carry for the four, second down and six. Wing back comes in motion, P.J. Henry. And I think they feed it to Shields again. They do. Smyrna right there. No gain. They went with a went with a wham play right there. And there's just too many bodies on that Smyrna defense for that central offensive front to block. Uh, that's tough sledding. Nazir Jenkins was the last one getting up off the ground, so he was in on that stop with a little help from his friends. Yeah, Charles Garb was in there as well, it looked like. So... They smirt a unit, man. They fly around the field. They're, they've been impressive. And they've got a lot of guys that have been playing since they were freshmen, yeah. sophomores. Um, this unit's really gelled through the years. And uh, they're, they're, they're one of, if not the best unit, I feel like, in, in the state, honestly, Glenn. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Rolling the pass, sets up, throws far sideline, and incomplete intended for Steen. And, you know, that was what we saw a lot of against William Penn back yeah. in that week one matchup. Yep. Those quick rollouts, I'm going to hit my tight end in the flat on on this out route, and that one just a little bit behind the intended target, and it's a wet, wet night. So that ball went right through the hands, but that's going to be a play that I think Central's going to going to have to execute as this uh, as this half unrolls. They're going to have to hit that a few times if they want to have a chance in this one. 
Steen back to punt, standing inside his own 20-yard line. Shields the up back blocker. It bounces to him, and he has to go back and try to cover it up. Smyrna will take over on downs inside the 15-yard line. I got to be honest with you, guys. this is surprising. I mean, this is surprising to see. I mean, this this Sussex Central team is, is like I said, they're usually with it. From yeah. jumps. And week one, they were with it against William Penn from what we saw. Um, and they were with it against Salesiana in that tough battle down, down at their place. So yeah. it's, they're shooting themselves in their own foot, whether it be turnovers, penalties, right there, the mishap on the snap. We're not used to seeing this from this, uh, no. from this program. Not to make any excuses, but uh, I'm sure that ball's a little slick. It, it definitely, definitely. Just so underway it, here. And you know, those gloves that these guys play with nowadays, and you know, my generation play with them too, they are great when it's dry out. But if they get wet, boy, do they get Fake slick. Fake to Holman, pass, pass out into the flat, and it's a touchdown to Ymir Knight. What a job there. Again, quick hit and pass by Wright. And what a job by Ymir. He's just so elusive in the open field, Glenn. Not much you can do there. 12-yard touchdown pass. Third touchdown of the game by Ymir Knight. What a job here by 18. I, I got to I gotta say, I mean, what we've seen Brian Wright in that Middletown game and what we're seeing here tonight from him, that young man has made some strides in only two weeks. Yeah. The confidence is way up. He's throwing the ball in rhythm, on time. Here's the two-point try. Great performance so far. Yep. Yamir Knight, Markel Holman in the backfield. Knight takes the snap, and he hands it off to Cole Moyer. He tries to sneak to the end zone, trying to get a push, and I don't think he made it. Like it, though. Something different. We're able to do it, Glenn, but as we go here to the kickoff, take a look at this replay, and Again, you can see Wayne, er, Yamir Nice is so hard to, to cover in the open ground. Yeah, it was a good play fake to Holman and a quick throw in the, so the sideline and a good block down there. That was that the number 11? That was the freshman, yeah. Okay, that was Kamaj Kearney getting the block and freeing up Yamir Knight for the score. All right, let's step aside. We'll be back for the kickoff after this at Smyrna 22, Sussex Central nothing. Concepts today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. Back here at Charles V. Williams Stadium. It's now 22 to nothing. Second ranked Smyrna over third ranked Sussex Central. Joshua Michael getting ready to kick off. What a job by Smyrna. One play after the turnover. Yeah, one play. That's not a, a skill position guy, like linebacker, lineman. That thing comes at you, you're like, ah, I, I need to fall on it. I need to fall yeah. on it. He's like, I know where I'm at on the field. I'm going to let this thing roll out of bounds. And they're going to get good field position out of it. All right, Golden Knights from their 35-yard line. They went three and out in their first possession here in the second half. Of course, a miss exchanged on the uh, long snap to the punter, Steen. He had to fall on it deep in his own end. It took Smyrna one play. Talk about sudden change. That's what teams try to do is capitalize immediately on the turnover. And the momentum right back on the shoulders of the Smyrna Eagles if they ever lost it. Back to pass as Morris throws far sideline and over the head of the intended receiver, drawing two flags. Uh, and, I, mean, I think they're going to they're gonna probably call, I would think, defensive holding. Yeah, that's what I, mean. I think, rather than pass interference, but we'll yeah. see. But, uh, you know, it was his throws off. It, like, let's be honest, Morris has been off today on his throws, but the placement – where he missed was a good spot, right? On a fade route like that, you want to make sure you're throwing that ball where only your guy can go yeah. get it. Um, he did a, He did a decent job on that, but he's been off a little bit. There yeah. it is, Glenn. You yep. called it. Yep, defensive holding. <laughs> Smart and faithful uh, uh, are uh, letting everybody know how they feel about it. That's right. 
Eagles fans are Eagles fans, right, Glenn? Yes. <laughs> yeah, whether it's here at Smyrna High or it's up in Philly. I love it. No. Oh, man. Yeah, dire play directly in front of us now from the round 45. Play action, rolling far side. Morris having to run for his life. He can't get back to the line of scrimmage. He's sacked two yards shy. Got a couple of players in there. Looks like Chandler along with Blaine. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Smyrna's smelling it right now, and this is tough. I, I, I don't like the body language right now from Sussex Central there. There was guys that once they got disengaged, they just kind of stood around looking, and your quarterback is just kind of left out to dry there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, give credit. Look at that face mask we got on the screen right here. <laughs> tell you what. That's Caleb Blaine. Tell you what, Blaine. The junior that's, nose. That's a menacing face mask he's got. <laughs> wow. Wow. Second down and 12, counter crisscross, long with the ball, long with the seam, first down in Smyrna territory, what and he job. finally goes down at the 35. That's one of the biggest plays of the night for the Golden Knights. How about that one? That's the first time we've seen Andrew Long make a play on the offensive side of the ball, and we talked about him, 5'6", 157, change of pace back, finally got him in space, and you see what he did. That's, it's not, that's a, nice place, a nice play to try and build some momentum off of. 25-yard pickup for Long. And you usually see the, the counter crisscross closer to the line of scrimmage. That one took place in the deeper in the backfield. Long in motion, quick hitter. Malik Bell puts a head down, and he barrels down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, good blocking there up front by Sussex Central. Bell did a good job, had a wide open hole to run through, fell forward, put two hands on the football. Well done. Now you feel the momentum shifting just a little bit again now back onto Sussex Central's shoulders. Yeah, and it, well, they got to finish this one off, Glenn. You're right. You're, you're starting to move the football against this defense really for the first time tonight. You want, you want to make sure you get points out of this drive. Under eight and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Long again in motion. Malik Bell runs right into, was that Nate Chandler? 44 and five. Yeah, it was Chandler as well as uh, Kearney. Both those young men were right there. They were not fooled. Yeah, I think it was C.J. Carney and Cole Moyer. Yeah, they were right there. I thought it was, I saw a four, and I thought maybe 42, but it was 44. And now Kearney will check out of the defensive alignment. Yeah, they stuffed it. They go back to back on the down, on the down play right there. And um, Smyrna was not fooled. They no. fooled me once. And <laughs> you know yeah, what shame I mean? on me, right? right. Fooled me twice. Shame on you. You know. Loss of a couple back to the Smyrna 32-yard line. Third down and seven. And it looks like a little timeout here. Personnel timeout for Smyrna. First of the second. Hit. One to 20. And they scored in the second quarter. Was it seven to nothing? Mike, seven, seven to, to nothing, nothing yeah. Sal's. Delmar just pummeling Woodbridge. Last score we had was 41 to 14 in the fourth quarter. At the half, Milford trailing red line 22 to nothing. And deep in the third quarter, Sussex Tech. Leading 33 to 22 over Lake. Now just 3:42 to go in the game. How about that? That's a that would be a nice win for Sussex. Yeah. State. I know they've had a couple tough losses this year. Um, that would be a really good one right there. Cause I'll tell you what, we seen uh, we seen Lake Forest take on Mount Pleasant earlier in the year, and I thought that unit is, is was pretty impressive. Yeah. So uh, that would be a nice win for them for sure. Yeah, Lake has some speed on that team. Timeout is over. Sussex Central coming out of the huddle with a third down and seven at the Eagle 32-yard line. 7.38 to go in the third. Smyrna up 22 to nothing. Long gets the ball, starts with a sweep, wow. cuts back nicely. And he is back to the original line of scrimmage. I think he's got the first down inside yeah. the 25 to the 26, and they do move the chains. Tell you what, man, this young man, that's now twice now he's had the ball. And he's made some guys look foolish out yeah. there. I, I I really like what I've seen from Andrew Long here in the second half, and it's right what the doctor ordered for Sussex Central. Nice cuts by him on you got the artificial surface here, but you know as well as I do, when you get a lot of rain, it's slick. Yeah, definitely is, definitely is. Um, but he seems to have good footing. And he's made a couple plays on defense and now getting involved on offense. See if they continue to, uh, to use him here. Steen. Split to the bottom of your screen to give us to Malik Bell. He's got to bounce it outside because there was ah. nothing there. And there's a couple of Eagles who finish him off for a loss. One of them was Brandon West, and the other was Nate Chandler. Yeah, Chandler just with the power driver right there, man, putting him in the dirt. 
He too has one of those intimidating face masks. But yeah, Bell, that that's one of those. I'd like to see him stay true to the hole, right? Yeah. He had that lined up up the middle. He tried to bounce it out, and when nothing was there, he turned back around. Well, now these guys are off their blocks, and Chandler just completely pounded them right there. You gotta stay true to your hole there. If yeah. it's a two-yard gain, it's a two-yard gain. You gotta live with that. And instead of pounding him in the dirt on this field, it's pounding him into the rubber pellets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back oh to boy. pass. Mars pressure's coming from Moyer. Gets rid of it and almost intercepted, but out of bounds. And it's incomplete pass. And that, uh, this is hard, Glenn. That's a one-man route they just did. They max protected on that and only sent one guy out on a route. Yeah. That's extremely difficult uh, to find success there. And, yeah, it was just good coverage. They weren't fooled. Smyrna was not fooled. It was, yep. was uh, I believe, Moyer out was there was, uh, was oh. Eric Spears was out yes, there in coverage. Yeah, in he, coverage. Did a, he did a great job not being fooled by that. Now third down and long. Cole Moyer, uh, by the way, his grandfather uh, updates us on scores sometimes and uh, hits us with some stats. And uh, apparently he's hunkered down in the bunker tonight. Now his wife braved the elements, and she's here. She's in attendance. I s shame on you, is grandfather. That, is that friend to the uh, the show, Earl? He's friend of the show. Yeah. Yeah, we don't call him out too bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, she told man. me to say that, Earl. She told me. <laughs> there was a holding <laughs> penalty, by the way. Yeah, we saw so. a flag. Yeah. Untimely for the Golden Knights, who were moving the ball pretty well on this drive. Throw out in the far flat is complete. A few yards after the catch, back to the Smyrna 30-yard line. See as they unpile. I think that was to P.J. Henry. I think you're right. And that now would be a um, – now you got to look for Waggle if you're Smyrna defensively. I mean, that's one of the only pass plays that you really got, a play action that's going to get you deep in the wing tee, unless he's going to go with a straight drop back, you know, four vertical. But that could be easy to defend. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot, not a whole lot of plays no. in the playbook in, yeah. in the wing tee for third and 17. Yep, third and 17 from the Smyrna 31-yard line. Five and a half minutes to go third quarter. Morris rolls far side, sets up, throws, looking wow. down the end zone for P.J. Henry, but it's out of bounds and incomplete. Tell you what, and I told you the waggle was coming, and they sure as, sure as the day is long, they ran it, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was open. Yeah. I mean, he was open, a better throw, and that, that's a completion. Smyrna was kind of late getting over there into that gap. That uh, that waggle route was definitely there, but Henry or Morris has just, just been slightly off on his throws tonight. Well, down uh, 22, didn't hold on. So Sussex Central turns the ball over on downs to Smyrna with 5.13 to go in the third, already leading 21, 22 to nothing. Yeah, that's a big stop there for Smyrna. Yeah. Now, again, you got a hot offense coming onto the field, a hot quarterback and Brian Wright. Be curious, do they, do they do they stick with the balanced flow or do they go heavy run up three scores in the second half? Get the clock running a little bit. High snap, hands it off to Holman. Wow. Started it up the middle, bounces to the outside and almost has 10 yards. I think he might have the first down. What a cut, Glenn. Yeah. What a cut. Let's watch this again. Watch this here in the backfield. He is dead to rights. Whoop, makes yep. a man miss. It gets to the outside. What a job. Yeah, it looked like a wide out out there made a nice block for him, too. Maybe it was Fretz. Number it was. Four. It yeah. was Fretz. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That deserved a Chris Berman. Whoop. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Boomer. Stumbling, bumbling. I thought he retired. He's somehow Holman back again, the going right side, trying to get the edge, and runs out of bounds up near the 45. Yeah, again, Holman able to get outside, and Sussex Central starting to see a little bit of head dropping a yeah. little bit. I mean, it, it, this game has not gone their way. No. And look, Smyrna's right back on the field. Yep. Sussex Central can't quite get set. Now they take a moment, check the sidelines for the change on the play. This is the this is the quintessential smelling blood in the water right now. Feed it to Holman again, up the middle, carries defenders for another first down, up near midfield. No man runs hard, Glenn, he runs hard. And they move the chains, they keep the clock running, it's down to four and a half minutes to go in the third. Next Saturday, no, next Friday night, Smyrna gets another home game, they'll entertain St. George's Tech. Those two had a barn burner last year. 
Well, what what is St. George's this year, right? I mean, that's kind of a wild yeah. card team we've been seeing in our, our Super 7s. So they've kind of been floating towards the bottom half of it. We'll see what Coach Wilson could do coming down here. Right, throws far flat, completes the pass to Fretz, and he's out of bounds near the 43-yard line. Good hand. Fretz, short-handed receiver out there. And I'll tell you, I, I can't help but be thoroughly impressed with Brian Wright. I know I sound like a broken record tonight, but – I mean, this young man's playing with supreme confidence. He's on time. I mean, those, those hitch routes are, are all timing. And he's putting it in, in perfect placement. Second down, about four for the Eagles. Holman again, right up the middle. Pounds down close to the 41. That's your Smyrna Bell Cow running back. Markel Holman, I mean that's a that, look at that young man right there. I mean that's that's a heavy load. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I mentioned it earlier on. He was a uh, first team All State running back last year for William Penn. Mm -hmm. Nice fashion statement too, with all the yellow. On. <laughs> yeah, I see that. And they got him again. Oh, that's about the fifth, maybe wow. the sixth time they've been pulled offside by the Hard Cadence. I, like I said, I mean it's. This is this is definitely surprising from Sussex Central. You don't see them typically get stuck with the the uh, play at Milford next week, and apparently first down play for the Eagles. Again, a hard clap here, back on their heels a little bit. Apologies here for the and technical th difficulties. I do want to mention that, Glenn. We okay. are having some issues. In right back to throw, looking sideline, and the catch is made by Andre Ashley. Junior wide out. Another impressive drive here by Smyrna Glenn. Just, you know, moving that ball down the field. Nice and easy, chewing some clock, too, shortening this game up. Yeah. They've done a good job of it. Two running backs stacked in the backfield. Way in motion, and a Sussex Central player runs up to try to anticipate the snap count, and there's yet another offside penalty against the Golden Knights, and that will give Smyrna first down. And it's just, it's a second consecutive third down. I mean, yeah. like you said, that's that's like the sixth time we've seen it. Four of them have been on third or fourth down. Yeah. Can't do that. Can't and it, do you that know, against this team and expect to win. To their credit, Sussex Central's had a couple of drives that they had opportunities to get points on the board tonight, and, of course, that big holding penalty really hurt them on the last drive. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'll, I'll make the statement again. Apologies for uh, technical difficulties with the Internet. Try and bring this thing to you glitch-free. I'm going to hand the ball off to, uh, I think that's Kearney. It Kamaj was. Kearney. Yes, it was. That the freshman lowered the boom on the carry, too. Fell forward for a decent game. Yeah, 24 down to the 17. A seven-yard pickup for the freshman. And I'll tell you, what, I mean, it, this is uh, this, you see a freshman out here contributing, and it's just a, yet again, it's just another, you know, feather in the cap of the youth football programs that have been popping up in these areas, Smyrna, Middletown, yeah. especially. Holman gets it, started right, cuts it back against the grain, easily has the first down yardage, still going on Jeez. his feet. They have it blown the whistle, and he's down to the five-yard line. Wow. Yeah, typically you see that one blown dead, but no. And Holman just kept the feet going. Yeah, somebody's down for Sussex Central at the just inside the 10. A little slow getting up. Yeah. No ball. No, everything's okay. He's definitely in some discomfort, that's for sure, but. How about Holman, man? Just continuing. Oh, I know. It's just a machine out there, man. I can't tell. Hopefully that's just cramping. That's uh, Shields. Now he's up on his feet now. Yeah, he's uncomfortable, but yeah, that, that's good to see. I'm glad to see him up, um, you know, off the turf and walking back under his own power. 146 to go and counting here in the third quarter. First and goal for the Eagles at the five-yard line. Right, got Oops. single coverage far side over there with, uh, with Fretz. If they want it, 
Knight and Holman in the backfield. Ball's oh, loose. Knight. Knight got the ball, and he was just crushed immediately. And center's going to get the ball, Glenn. The ball came loose. They fell on it. Oh, they got it. The ball came to the mesh point. I mean, he was hit as that ball was being handed off. It popped loose. And there you go. There's Central gets a break. It's Second much turnover, break yeah. For them. And they'll get the ball back. Just down to three scores at 22 to nothing, trying to make something happen late in the third quarter. Yeah, there wasn't much Yamir could do there. I mean, he was smoked right away. Andre Shepard, I think, was in there with one hit, but there was like two defenders that just jumped on his back. Yeah. And miscommunication up front by that smart offensive line. And uh, you know, maybe two guys blocking one guy, <laughs> and it just the floodgates opened. Central with the ball deep in their own end. Counter play. Spun around up across the 10 to the 11-yard line, a pickup of about four. See as they unpile. Yeah, and it's, it's just a tough spot for Sussex Central. Like, you know, we talked about it at halftime, down two scores. Now down three. Uh, not a quick strike offense. Yeah. You know, it's not their strength. Inside of a minute to go in this third quarter. Next week, we will be at Dover High. We'll see Apo again against the Dover Senators. Well, last time we saw Apo, I mean, we couldn't help but walk away being impressed. Yeah. Apo has St. George's Tech tomorrow. That should be a good one. Speed sweep. Trying to, yep, and he cuts it back. P.J. Henry does. He's he got, got a block. He has the edge at the 20 and knocked out of bounds at about the 22 Maybe the 21-yard line. Let's see. They look but good. it is a first down. Good job staying at home right there by Mac by uh, Makai Stinnett because uh, on that cutback, he was the last guy between P.J. Henry in the end zone, and he was able to force him out of bounds. Henry hasn't carried the ball too much tonight. I have him down as only like four carries. Yeah, he had, yeah, Glenn, that's, he's definitely right on that. Got a double-digit run there, and. He really turned disaster into a, a big positive for the Golden Knights. They were bringing a sweep to the near side. He saw all the defenders, and he made a nice cutback. See Central just you know, walking up to the line. Not a whole lot of pep in their step. Pitch out, sweep to the far side. That's Malik Bell. Puts his helmet right into a Smyrna defender, and he is going to be out at the 24-yard line. Gain of a couple. Hey, if you're Smyrna, it, you, you don't mind this. No. You don't mind this. Yeah. I mean, you, you'll, you'll gladly give up three or four yards and, and some more clock running off, even though he got out of bounds there. But right. still, like, just no big plays at this point. Yeah. No big plays. And so far tonight, uh, I mean, we expected a close, low-scoring battle. I, I'm surprised Smyrna has pretty much dominated this game. Yeah. On both sides of the ball. For sure, Glenn. No, I, yeah, exactly. Um, back to pass as Morris. Pressure's coming. Chandler and Moyer were back there. Yeah, that's just a breakdown up front. And, you know, you see, a, you see big uh, big Nate Chandler coming at you. That's a, that is a that is a, a disaster waiting to unfold right there. Yeah. That Sussex Central can't have big losses on plays like that. And we've come to the end of third quarter. At the end of three, it's 22 to nothing. Smyrna over Sussex Central. We'll be back to start the fourth quarter right after this on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. <laughs> I'm Chef Hari Cameron. At Grandpa Mac, pasta's our thing. We serve quality food fast that's not fast food. We make everything in-house and serve something for everyone. We're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Follow the noodle to Grandpa Mac. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news, free to every reader, because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live, our state, our news, our home. Back here, ready to start the fourth quarter with Smyrna leading 22 to nothing, but 
believe we have an unsportsmanlike penalty after the sack at the end of the third quarter, Pat. Yeah, we've yet to see who it's on. It came from the secondary. Um, so, it, you know, I, I don't know how to speculate that, <laughs> but it looks like it's going to be third down and quite a bit, but that's that's where the sack went back to was the 19. Yeah. We'll have to see what the additional penalty is here. Got a further uh, scoring update for you. Salazianum so scored on a pick six. So they now lead Hodson 14 to nothing. Still in the second quarter. Oh, it is half now. It is halftime. And that ball game up at Abyssinia. So let's see what happens after this. I don't see. They're still uh, at the 19. I guess that getting ready to step off penalty yards now. We got a, another the sack was back at the 14-yard line, so penalty yard stepped off from the sack. Oh, it's on Smyrna. Uh, they, uh, we do have a final update here, Glenn. Sussex Tech's going to get a big homecoming win, 33-30. to 30 Wow. Over Lake. So Lake came back, and listen to this one, had a chance on the doorstep, on the doorstep with six seconds left, and the Ravens came up with a big-time stop. Wow. Now we got a whistle before this play gets underway. As it's now third down and three after the unsportsmanlike penalty. And I think we've got a timeout taken by the Eagles. Uh, They're still showing their complement of, uh, well, they don't have timeouts on this scoreboard. Smyrna takes a timeout to kind of settle down the defense a little bit. We'll keep it right here. Yeah, so, I mean, there you have it, right? So, at the lake, the not giving up, though, Glenn. No. Going back, trying to make something happen there. That's a good ball club in two-way. It is. It is. Other scores, uh, Red Lions is well in hand. They're up 39 to nothing right now over Milford. Caravelle's up big right now as well. I believe yeah. that was a 44 to 6 last night. Running clock seen. there. Yep. Um, so, but, yeah. I mean, Seaford taking a loss was, kind of, was shocking. McCain, that McCain football program, they're in the, they're going in the right direction. They took a loss here tonight, 27-14 at DMA, but they seem to be in the right direction as well. Yep. Give us off left tackle. That's Malik Bell. He's fighting for yards, and he's shoved out of bounds. Keeping the they're clock going to keep going. the clock running, yeah. He's up across the 30, marked out at about the 31, maybe the 32-yard line. I think they're giving him a, looks like they're giving him a first, Glenn. Yep, he got the three yards he needed. Seeing a lot of Malik Bell tonight. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I, I mean, he runs the ball hard. There's no, there's no denying that. Not a whole lot of PJ Henry. A little surprised. Yeah, not a whole lot of PJ. You're exactly. I'm, I'm surprised as well. Mostly Bell, Shields, and uh, occasionally Long. Now Mars back to pass. Throws it in the far flat, in and out of the hands of Long, incomplete. He had it him. Yeah. If he caught that, he was about to be pounded on by uh, Chris Galban. Yeah, that's one of those, Glenn, where you had him in the flat, and he had separation. You're right, Galban's right on him. But if he puts that ball on the outside outside shoulder there and allows him to catch the ball going full speed and he could turn upfield, he had an opportunity to either break that tackle and bust this thing, or at the very least he was five yards down, down the way. So, But you can see, again, he's just a little bit off Morris. I mean, that ball was behind the receiver. Single wing, they do the crisscross in the backfield again. And P.J. Henry brought down on a great one-on-one -on -one tackle by Nazir Jenkins. Yeah, what a job by Jenkins. He came flying up there, open field one-on-one -on -one with Henry. And it, he made the big-time tackle because if he doesn't make that tackle, Glenn, that defense was all flowing to yeah. us. That P.J. may still be running. So that's a big-time tackle. Big play by Jenkins for Smyrna. Clock running now under 10.50 to go in the game. Got to have some urgency. I don't like Central doesn't have a whole lot of urgency right now. Glenn. Yeah. They seem to be walking to the line. You know, I, I don't like seeing that. Play fake to Henry. Throw downfield. It was low and intended for Chris Shields up at the 45 and incomplete. It was definitely low, but it looked like Shields was going to bring that one in potentially. It wasn't until... 
Uh, the hit right there by Robert Tur uh, Durnall, uh, number 32, kind of jarred that one loose. So yeah, yeah Central's in a, in a situation now where they got to go, they got to go, yeah. and you know, you're starting to see them get you know a little bit deeper into the passing game here. Fourth down and 13, so Steen and the punt. Dway, he's back here, ready to return. Not much of a rush. Punt will bounce in front of Dway. He doesn't pick it up. He just gets out of the way, and it's going to be down inside the Smyrna 20-yard line at the 19. Hey, you got a little nervous. He didn't want to yeah. come up and field that bouncing ball. Well, they're probably yelling at him from the sideline, let it go, let it go. Yeah. Don't want to afford to have any kind of turnover with with a good lead. Yeah, it, and it, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't hurt you, right, Glenn? You're, you're yeah. letting that clock run a little bit further down. Um, you're not for you're not risking the chance that you're not going <laughs> to get it. I love the uh, the, the coaches rub. on the sideline. Yeah, that's the <laughs> belly rub play here coming up. Well, we got to see what this is. Well, there is there is a common play called the belly, and it's a <laughs> wing tee specialty. I don't think it would be that easy. I think they're no. a little more intricate over in Smyrna than <laughs> <Yeah>, that. Right. <laughs> Hand off right up the middle. Big hole. Oh, Good wow. jump cut. Oh, my Lord. By Holman, and he's all the way up to about the 35-yard line. That kid can jump cut with the best of them. Yeah, we, got, we got this You got to see Glenn. it again, huh? Yeah, we're going to see it again we're right here. These poor linebackers. This is not fun. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> You go for the tackle, and then all of a sudden you're just you're you're touching air. Air, grabbing air. You're just grabbing air. Goes to Holman. Holman putting on a show here in the second half. He's going against a worn down defense right yeah. now. He got out of bounds. That stopped the clock with 10, 11 to go. Smyrna looking to go two and zero oh in District Two of Class Three A. Central was looking to remain undefeated at 4-0 overall. Pass in the near flat. Looked like he got the catch and got out of bounds is Gway. Yeah, good job there by Gwayne again. Hey, you know, I like this from right. Just take what the defense gives you. They want to sink off, play seven yards off the ball. That's all right. I'll hit a little three-yard hitch route to Gway, and uh, we'll just move the ball down the field that way. And that's what he did. It's second down and seven at the 39-yard line of the Eagles. Uh, and that time we've got premature moving along the line. I don't know whether this one might not be against Smyrna. I think there was a timeout prior. Called a, called a timeout prior? Smyrna called a timeout prior. All right, that's their second. We're going to step aside as well with 10.05 to go in the game. It's Smyrna 22, Sussex Central nothing. Back after this. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live. It's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here, and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets, and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Your home, your community. Glenn Fraser alongside Pat Gariantes here at Charles B. Williams Stadium. Smyrna on top 22 to nothing on camera tonight. Mike Lang, we borrowed him from the upstate crew. And we fired uh, we fired Nick Halliday because last week we caught him at the Apo game sleeping. Slipping. He had the camera on the sideline and a play was going on. <laughs> we caught him slipping. That's yeah, yeah, right. yeah. No, we, 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 didn't, we couldn't fire him because he's the boss. <laughs> he's the boss. <laughs> Yeah, it, it took the bus, <laughs> took the bus over Nick, and then hit it in reverse and went back over him right there. It's yeah. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had we borrowed our uh, our volleyball expert here, Mike Lang. Yep. No pancakes this week, huh? No pancakes. Oh, there's been some pancakes. Yeah. There's been some there's pancakes been some out there. It's different sure. kinds of pancakes. Mm. Yeah. Pancake blocks out here. All right, timeout over. We're ready to go. Smyrna with a second and seven at their own 39. Holman in the backfield with Wright. Looks like Coach Judy uh, is discussing something with one of the officials here, line judge. 
I know we said it uh, when he was back for the first time last weekend. So glad to see him back on the sidelines. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, someone's birthday. The band is over there singing happy birthday, Glenn. Okay. A happy Libra. Not mine. Over there. Yours is coming up, or wait, did we pass it? It's coming up. All right. Holman. Coming up on Thursday. Got a yard. It's the big 3-0, Mike Lang asking <laughs> what it was. Yeah, the big 3-0, Mike. I, I've, uh, we'll have to celebrate at our li Delaware li Do we have a Delaware Live this week, or are we, ha are we off? I think we do. I think we got a show. I think we, I think we do have a show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to be. We'll have to do it. I'll have to uh, order some chicken wings. I'll have <laughs> to share my uh, my pregame song with the team. Okay. With all the teams that come on. From their own 40, third and six. Right checks the sideline, see if they change the play up. 9.20 to go in this one. Smyrna right now has this one in hand. Yeah, the big trail, and I got the gray hairs to prove it. Oh, I'll get out of here. <laughs> Holman looking for a <laughs> hole, and he ran right into a defender at the line of scrimmage. There'll be a yard loss. It'll be fourth down, a little extracurricular activity going on, and cooler heads prevail. What a job there. That's Jaden Dorsey, number 42, just – you know, just sitting right there, it, it just made the great play on Holman there. Yeah. Dropped to a knee, and you see he's got to run off a little bit here, but just did a great job staying true to his gap and, and coming up with a big tackle. Might we see the first? No, it would be the second punt of the night for Smyrna. Yeah, four they had six. one in the first quarter. They did, the opening drive. Yep, yep. That was the only punt. Yep, Yamir's there to take the snap. And this has been a dangerous play for Smyrna all year. Golden Knights probably get an opportunity. Oh, they're this is the pitch back to Gway. Yeah, that's the old swinging gate. Let's yep. see what they call here. I think we got a delay game. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Delay game. The Eagles are he backed did up. He did one of these. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, he did one of these. Uh, is that a legal substitution? I'm not sure. Well, whatever. Smyrna's backed up five yards to try the punt again. But yeah, they have the old swinging gate there for Gway. I like yeah. that. That's the safer play. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. Glenn. I mean, that's get get some depth there. Now, if they're going to try that again, Central's alert to that. And they're going to blitz off the edge. Oh, it's a pitch back to Gway. He gets the left foot. It's partially deflected. Goes out of bounds, and the Golden Knights are going to have the ball at the Smyrna 40. No, he still keeps going downfield. Looks like the 43-yard line. Yeah, Central again. I mean, got to try and get some positivity out of this one here, uh, Glenn. Uh, got to keep trying to take your shots here. It just hasn't been their night, but you got to try and establish some momentum going into next week. Yep. Say so Sussex Central will be on the road again next week. They'll be at Milford High. Milford losing tonight to uh, Red Lion Christian Academy. That will even the Lions' record at two and two, and I believe it also evens Milford's record at two and two. Yeah, it's a nice win there for that uh, Red Lion program, and you know they were guests of the show this week. You guys got to talk to them. Uh, yeah, some impressive young men over it there. It was. Yep, it was a great night. P.J. Henry in motion. He gets the football, trying to get the edge, and right there to grab him from behind was Nate Chandler. Great job by Chandler. Good job scraping down the line by that Smyrna defensive front. Smyrna just spreads that sweep out, they and do. they just block all the running lanes. They do, Glenn. I mean, that's and that's technique. I mean, that's just technique. They, that's technique, and that's also scouting. Like yeah. They see that motion coming. They're being taught. Get get your shoulders turned, run to the sideline, and move. Just move that that whole pile right there. That's usually in the middle of the field. Just move it over. Yeah. Don't give them the space. And it also helps when you got athletes on your defensive line. I mean, these guys aren't big, burly guys. They can move. Second down and nine. Back to pass. Pressure's coming. He unloads it downfield. Almost had that one. P.J. Henry. That's a perfect throw. I mean, that ends up being a perfect throw, and I know that, again, which is kind of a chuck and duck, but. Yeah. Um, he did, put, literally. Morris, yeah. Morris put that right in the in the, uh, in the the bread basket there, but just could not 
call that when it's been that kind of night for Henry. It's been a struggled night, but I like you got to take your shots, man. You never know. You score quickly here. You get down two scores. Yeah. Who knows what can happen? Still 7 one to go. Yeah. Third down and nine coming up for the Golden Knights from the Eagle 42-yard line. Garrett Statler will split to the top of your screen. Also up there is Long. Henry's the wing back. And the quarterback just takes it himself. C.J. Morris or T.J. Morris. TJ I don't know. Well, that was a busted play. Henry looked like he didn't even move. Yeah, I'm not sure. T.J.'s got to be careful with that ball, man. He had that thing out there hanging loose. Got to be careful with that. There's a timeout, Coach Wells. Yeah, they're going to talk over a fourth down play here. So a pickup of three on the carry by T.J. Morris. Timeout taken by Coach Wells. Let's step aside for 30 seconds. We'll be back with 6.43 to go in this one, and Smyrna up 22 to nothing. We passed by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like, from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. I would always... Back here with 6.43 to go after the timeout by Coach Wells. Sussex Central with a fourth down coming up. Fourth and about six from the Smyrna 39-yard line. Waggle. He's back to pass. He throws against the body. Nice deflection at the last second. Timed it perfectly. That's number 12, Eric Spears. Yeah, again, Spears. He's made a few plays in the secondary tonight, Glenn. Yeah. That was a nice one. He timed that one up nicely, like you said. And he avoided running through the receiver to do it because that very easily could have turned into a pass interference. Yeah. He made sure not to, to, to make body contact and knock the ball away and another turnover on downs. You gotta love Twitter. I love some of the comments that people make. I, I'm not going to mention what it is, but uh, you can take a look at that. <laughs> uh, all right, down on the field, Smyrna taking over on downs around 39-yard line. Hand off to Holman, right up the middle. He weaves, he bobs, and he falls forward a yard shy of the first down. Yeah, and in a, in a game where you've just Everything you've tried to do has been denied in Sussex Central. The last thing you want is big Markel Holman just running through you <laughs> as time is winding down. Unofficially, I have him for 65 yards in the second half, which would put him over 100 for the game. I am, it's about right. And depth, the yards per carry is definitely up here in the second half. Right oh, now. yeah. And they're just going to let the clock run as long as they can. Yeah. Under six minutes to go in the ball game. Wright changes up the play, alerts the offensive line, takes the snap, gives it to Holman. There's a shock. <laughs> oh, boy. He needed a yard. He gets all the way down to the 40, and he picks up 12. Yeah, this is just, this is like, um, let's just ride the hot hand right now. And, again, you know, Sussex Central, the energy level is just not there right now from them. And Holman's having a field day running. He just wants contact. No, actually, I want to correct myself. I, Milford did play in week zero, so that was their fifth game tonight. They've now fallen to two and three. And uh, with the win, Red Lion improves to two and two. Middletown now trailing 28 to 12 to Washington High out in Ohio. Little false start. Yep, five yard penalty. So the final on that one was Red Lion 39 to nothing over Milford. It's a big win right there for Red Lion. Look at Desmond Aladige and company. Yeah. And that you mentioned that young freshman quarterback, Budinger. We're really impressed with him. Yeah. 
he's gonna be something, man. They they can protect him. Like, hey, we saw him that week one, week two matchup. Yeah. Week one matchup. Saint Marks. Saint Marks. Yep. You know, that was an elite pass rush he was going against. They, they couldn't quite protect him to that level. but He still threw for over 100 yards. He did. Tried to set up the screen and then just throws it down to the feet. That's a wise throwaway there intended for Holman. It, yes, it is. And, you know, I like seeing that from Brian Wright because that means he's paying attention to the coaching he's receiving on the sidelines. Yeah. He had a very similar play earlier in the game, if right at the beginning of the game, where that was swallowed up, and he rolled out and threw the ball downfield and ended up getting a penalty because the linemen were like, oh, it's going to be a screen, and they were downfield. That time, he was smart. Next time, you throw it maybe a little bit sooner so you don't yep. take the hit. Yep. <laughs> but so the Delmar-Woodbridge game is final now, 41-14. to Jalen Johnson rushes for 173 yards for the Wildcats. Wow. You know, I've said this for years because every time people are like, oh, it's a down year for Del Mar. Oh, it, it looks like it's going to be a down year. This team gets rolling around midseason, year in and year out. So, like, I know I know, Coach Hearn's not there anymore, but, you know, this is historically a team that will start off 0-2 and, and then rattle off seven out of their next eight, and now they're, they're a, an elite team come playoff time. So, yeah, yeah I keep an eye on that Del Mar group. Looks like there's uh, looks like there's some unhappy uh, unhappy Eagle fans. Yeah, yeah, there are. Uh, it's, it's getting a well, little. it's one of those. So uh, it get a little comical they call it now. intentional grounding, right? They call yeah, it yeah, intentional yeah. grounding. And this is one where you know we're gonna have to get coached and up on the rules here at the high school level. But <laughs> what's the quarterback <laughs> supposed to do there? Yeah, I mean seven was right there within two three yards of that throw. I don't like, and that's that's what I'm saying. So we'll have to get coached up. We'll have to talk with the officials just to make sure we understand the rule fully. But I don't know what more the quarterback's supposed to do there. He's protecting himself. He's protecting his team. And you see Coach Judy talking it over with the officials. Yeah. Because yeah, you want to teach that. You want to make sure you're teaching your guy, you know, the right the right thing there. Caravelle has gone final with Concord. That score ends up 44-6. to six. So we got just about everybody final except for Middletown out in Ohio and the Salesian Hudson game, which started a half hour behind this one. Tell you what, Glenn, we got second down or third in Ocean City for the Well that would be offense, that would be the you? wrong way. That's that way. We'll we'll call third okay. and we'll call it third in Middletown. <laughs> That's north of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> third in Trolley Square. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Back at the Eagle forty yard line. And now after uh, a lengthy time trying to get some kind of a play in, I believe the Eagles are, after all this, are going to call a timeout. <laughs> and there's definitely still, uh, there's some unhappiness. <laughs> I did. Mean, this is now the are second stoppage Smyrna's had to are take. Are, are, we in, are we in Philadelphia watching the Philadelphia Eagles? I'm, I'm listening to the crowd. Anyhow, we're going to step aside with 4.56 to go in the game. It's still 22 to nothing on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor. Helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, Strong service. Melissa Ellis. Is this has been a long stoppage of play, sorting this thing out when uh, Wright backpedaled to try to set up the screen, threw the pass at the pretty much at the feet of his intended receiver, Holman, and then I think grounding was called. There was a penalty against Marna. They're backed up now to the 40-yard line, and then the Eagles took a timeout. Let's see what they have in the playbook for third and 30. Gotta love it. The old hook and ladder. There's right 
Throws the home run ball down the sideline, looking for Fretz, but it was out of bounds and uncatchable. Stopping the clock with 4.48 to go, putting Smyrna in fourth and 30. And will we see the second punt of the game for the Eagles? We might. I'll tell you what, that was a good throw there by Wright. Honestly, showed a little bit of the arm strength right there. And I'll, and I'll mind it. You, you take your shot with uh, with Fretz, who made a nice acrobatic catch earlier in the game. Yeah. But uh, a little too much arm on that, believe it or not, by Wright. And he threw that one out of bounds. And I would say the, the direction that the wind's blowing yeah. in, it's a stiff breeze. That helped, too, carry that ball out of bounds. It did, Glenn. It did. Yeah. Yeah, this is a mild night. Yep. Certainly uh, that wind has had some effect on uh, Morris's throws as well. He's had a couple sail that direction out of bounds. That is correct. All right, here we go. Here comes the old swinging gate. Yep, Gway's back in the game. Yamira Knight calling signals. Some people not a big fan of this play. <laughs> <laughs> There's the pitch back. There's the punt. He got this one off. No block there. And it bounces back a little bit and down the close to the 45-yard line of the Golden Knights. They'll have good field position with 4.38 to go, trying to avert a shutout at this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Smyrna's going to try to preserve that shutout. No doubt about it. You can tell these guys have uh, they got some energy over here, this, this <laughs> sea of red. Yeah. And I like the uniform changes, right? I mean, for years they kind of modeled themselves after Oregon. Now they got some uh, Ohio State flair to them, look like the Buckeyes down there. Yeah, for uh, I think it was a year or two, they, they added gray to the mix. Yeah. So they had red and white with a little bit of gray trim in there, and yeah. that looked pretty sharp. Actually, I got to tell you, I like the Washington Nationals unis today. What they have on there? They had gray with uh, white lettering and a little bit of the cherry blossom. On the helmets ah, and on the jerseys. I, and did I liked it. I thought it was sharp. I did see the cherry blossom and some stills. And but some they lost photos. to the Phillies 5-1, to one, so we might not see those unis anymore. Magic I numbers guess. down to five, <laughs> Glenn. Magic numbers down to five, baby. And they might not get to play another game until the rain's <laughs> over. Uh, yeah, build the arc, ladies and right. gents. Build your arcs. It's coming. Second down to ten after the incomplete. Smyrna Band's getting after it over there. Love Regiment it. in red. Love that. Yeah, it's been a tough night for uh, T.J. Morris tonight. He's only completed one pass. He gets away from pressure, gets away from Chandler, points downfield, makes the throw, and a nice catch made at the Smyrna 40, and then triple teamed after the catch. That's P.J. Henry on the catch, and then he shoves a defender after he makes the catch. Hey, well, that's a heck of a throw right there. Good job by Morris eluding the, the pressure. Setting his feet and firing a strike into Henry, who did a good job fighting off defenders for the catch. And that's the most positive pass play yeah. tonight. Yeah, 18 yards. Henry's uh, made both of the receptions. Clock down to 4.14 four to go in the ball game from the Smyrna 41. Fresh set of downs for the Golden Knights. Play action to Henry. Back to pass. Throwing downfield and over the head of everybody. I don't know whether that was a miscommunication on the route or what. He's been off. I mean, his, 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 his depth perception has been off on these throws. He's, he's been missing deep. And, you know, the, the, the safety and secondary work of Smyrna has done a good job of keeping the receivers in front of them. So these overthrows, yeah. they're the ones going back and making plays on them. And let's face it, uh, the reason that he's had to throw so much, not – just because they're down 22 to nothing, but Smyrna's done a fantastic job against the wing T running attacks. They have. They definitely have. And uh, and then, you know, game script comes into play here after you get down a few scores. Now you've had to get in the front one. But, yeah, when this game was tight, you're exactly right. They were swallowing up every single type of play that Sussex Central was trying to throw at them. Play action again. Morris, well, he gets the pass off, looking downfield for long, long. Oh! Did he make that catch? No, oh. incomplete. That was almost an acrobatic catch back there defending was Corey Williams for Smyrna. That's a good throw by Morris. He got pump faked. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of got off balance. He had a guy about to hit him, and he still threw that ball 50 yards in the air. That was almost a, a fantastic reception. That would have been a top play nominee. Yeah, I think Williams just bothered him enough to make the miss there. Third down and 10, back at the Smyrna 41, under four minutes to go in the ballgame. 
Once again, Sussex Central on the road next week. They're at Milford against the two and three Buccaneers. And Smyrna stays right here as they host St. George's Tech. Play action again. This play action to Long. He's being chased. And try an attempt at an ankle tackle. Finally brought down. That's a couple yard loss, and I think getting in there to make the stop was Junior Darnall. Yeah, great job by Darnall chasing him down. I'll tell you what, that that ended up not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Morris somehow yeah. has got close to the line of scrimmage after running around in his own territory. Yeah, it only takes a three yard loss on the sack. Third time he's been sacked in the game. Clock running near 310 to go. Fourth and. 13 for the Golden Knights. Once again, we have another game coming up tomorrow. We'll have the Civil War battle, the rivalry between Dover and Caesar Rodney at Dover High. Kickoff at noon on the air around 11.45. Sussex Central calls a timeout, so let's catch you up on some finals. Everything's just about final now that uh, we can get. Indian River squeaks out a 21-20 win over Seaford. DMA knocks off McCain, 27-14. Caravelle with an easy win over Concord, 44-6. A back-and-forth thriller with Lake Forest and Sussex Tech, and the Ravens hold on to get a 33-30 win over the Spartans. Red Lion with a 39-0 win over Milford. Del Mar, 41-14 over the Blue Raiders of Woodbridge. In the third quarter, Salesian 14-0 over Hodson. And uh, last we checked, Middletown trailing Washington High out at Paul Brown Stadium in Ohio, 28-12, the score there. It's now 42-18 late in the fourth quarter of that game, Glenn. Oh, uh, Middletown now 42-18? Yes, and a big win. Laurel continues their winning ways with a 50-6 victory over Polytech. Shout out to uh, Marty Sheehan. Oh, thank you. At Laurel's the highest scoring team in the state. They're averaging over 47 points a game. Yeah, they're, they, so they, they hit their average. They may be stronger than they were last year, if you can believe that. All right, Central ready to go with a fourth down play. T.J. Morris trying to move his wide receivers. Has time. Now he has to roll. Chandler was coming at him. Throws it down, 2.43 to go in this one. This internet doesn't want to figure itself out. Mm. Ashley and Fred split to the top of your screen. Alone, wide out, that's Gway to the bottom. And it looks like, is that you? I don't believe Central's got any more timeouts left, so this couple first downs could do this for sure. Jameer Smyrna. Knight takes a direct snap, fake the pitch out. He runs at the 50, 40, uh -huh. and out of bounds near the 35-yard line. Keeps, uh, keeps the clock stopped. I'll tell you what, he broke through that line, man. That's, uh, you know, these Knight brothers, all three of them, <laughs> Have a second and third gear that, yeah. like, <laughs> I, I could only dream. Sometimes I have it in my <laughs> dreams. Sometimes I still don't have it when I'm, when I'm dreaming <laughs> of being an athlete. Let me tell you. <laughs> Pat Gariante's knight, adopted by the knight family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do I get some speed if I, if <laughs> I get adopted by them? Yeah. Way in motion. Hand off from knight to Holman. He crashes down inside the 30 to the 29. He'll pick up six. So Holman for the night, over 100 yards rushing. Knight has all three touchdowns. He's over 50 yards rushing. That's just a, a complete victory tonight for Smyrna, both sides of the football. Uh, they've lo they've looked good. They looked good, and you know this is uh this is a big time win. Obviously, they had the the, the game against CR coming off of the loss, but this is the first time that you know they they had another top five opponent in front of them. Since that Middletown get heartbreaker yeah. at Middletown, and they came out, and they they sent a message. Yeah. They sent a message, and you know that was led by Brian Wright, in my opinion. I know 
you know, Yamir's got the three touchdowns, but Brian Wright coming out and throwing the football <laughs> the way he did. Yamir that time faked the pitch out. He took off running, tried to get the edge, and he saw Gabe Cannon right there getting ready to level him. Smart kid. He just got down on the ground as a 30. That's a senior. That's a senior making a senior play right there. Exactly. Don't go out of bounds. You're. you're this is. This is the victory formation before victory formation. All you gotta do is just stay in bounds. Yep. Let this clock tick. Yamir stays in the game to take the direct snap. As we're down to 115 to go, Gway in motion. And after Gway gets set, Yamir looks to the sidelines again. As we're down to 105 to go. It's an RPO, and Knight takes it. He gets a block from Ashley on the edge. Now the flag comes out. He goes down near the 11-yard line. This might be a face mask, according to our cameraman. That's one of those there where Ymir, he made the senior play here, and then it's one of those where it's like get the first down and then just fall down. All right, let's check the white hat. I thought we might have an, an illegal block on one of the wideouts there trying to give Knight some uh, some room. So there it is. It's an illegal block, illegal use of hands. And it's a spot foul from looks like a right around the 18. So that on the gate, a nice run. Yeah, it's going to hurt the uh, the, yard, the yards per carry <laughs> on your mirror there for sure. Clock stopped just under 52 seconds to go in this one. Smyrna will improve to 2-0. and oh as they are the defending 3A District 2 champs, and they'll now be alone in first place. 3-1 and one overall. They're ranked second behind Middletown in our Super 7 poll. Sussex Central will suffer its first loss of the year. They're 0-1 in District 2, and they are now 3-1 and one overall. 30 seconds to go in this one. Yeah, Central, you know, they just couldn't get it going tonight, Glenn. They, they couldn't get it going from jump, really, honestly. Holman takes the handoff, and it, you said it earlier, Pat. You can't miss him with those yellow stockings. Love them, and the yellow, and the yellow cleats, and the yellow gloves, and the yellow <laughs> towel. Picked up a couple of yards there. They stopped it for the chains being moved. And that will do it. Smyrna will not have to snap the ball again. The Eagles with a very impressive 22 to nothing shutout win here against Sussex Central on our first state ortho game of the week. And we will be back to start the post-game show right after these messages on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. <laughs> I'm Chef Hari Cameron. At Grandpa Mac, pasta's our thing. We serve quality food fast that's not fast food. We make everything in-house and serve something for everyone. We're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Follow the noodle to Grandpa Mac. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community based news, free to every reader, because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live, our state, our news, our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 Two two three nine four eight two two. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor, helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. 
That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, strong service. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted. Adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges. BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry. Giving our customers the advantages they need right now. Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution, free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware. Come check us out. Matt's Fish Camp features seafood classics, coastal comfort food, and chef-driven specials that pair perfectly with our large selection of craft ales, curated wine lists, and camp cocktails. Matt's offers indoor and outdoor dining and is the perfect place to have dinner with your family, happy hour with friends, or enjoy lunch at the Raw Bar. Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round. See you soon. Barkley Heating and Air. Glenn Fraser alongside Pat Gariantes, Mike Lang on camera tonight here on our first state ortho game of the week. Number two against number three in Class 3A, and let me tell you, number two flexed its muscle a little bit here tonight. Outgaining Sussex Central 350 yards to barely 100 for the Golden Knights. The Golden Knights had 25 yards passing as uh, T.J. Morris was harassed all night in the backfield. Yeah. He completed two out of 17, was intercepted twice for 25 yards. He was sacked four times for a loss of 16 yards. The team did manage to gain 93 yards rushing, led by the 46 from Long, 30 from Shields, and uh, that was basically their offense tonight. They just couldn't get on track. Great defensive effort tonight by Smyrna. It was, and, you know, we've seen them now twice. And they put a, an impressive defensive performance up against a high-powered, potent Middletown offense, uh, holding them to 14 points with the exception of the game-winning touchdown yeah. where their defender fell down. So. Um, they came out here tonight. This is another statement for them. This, this is one of the best defenses I've seen in quite some time. Um, yeah, this, this was definitely a good one for that Smyrna group. Offensively for Smyrna, again, these are unofficial stats. Holman carried the ball 23 times for 126 yards. Only seven carries for 56 yards, but two touchdowns on the ground for Knight, who also caught four passes for 40 yards and another touchdown. Knight scored all three touchdowns. And one of the two two-point conversions, he scored 20 of Smyrna's 22 tonight. Great night from uh, quarterback Brian Wright. I would say his best game of the year. 16 out of 23 for 160 yards. He did have one pick, and he had one touchdown uh, pass as well. Uh, and he spread it all over the field. Did. I was extremely impressed. Honestly, that, that was my biggest takeaway from this game from, from Smyrna. We saw how good the defense was against Middletown. We know how good Ymir Knight has been. We know how good Mark Holman is. But Brian Wright has been the, was the X factor for them, right? That that hurt them in the first half against Middletown. They weren't able to establish the passing game. This young man came out here, and I think he turned some heads, uh, as senior quarterback did tonight. But those numbers you had mentioned, that's big. If he can put together even 
even a, a fraction of that kind of performance and, and allow defenses to at least respect the passing game moving yeah. forward, this Smyrna offense has got the athletes and are dynamic enough to really cause some problems come playoff time. So this was a big-time statement by Brian Wright, and I think it was a great sign if you're a fan of the Smyrna Eagles to see that. That was what they were missing yep. in the Middletown game. Yep, and thousand percent. It looks like they have it tonight because that's a very good Sussex Central Golden Knight defense that Smyrna put 22 points on the board. Uh, there are so many people that could be player of the game. We, we could select Brian Wright, mm -hmm. who is now – getting close to 400 yards passing for the season in his fourth game, Markel Holman. What a job he did, 160 yards, or 100 and uh, what we get him with, 126 yeah, I mean on the ground. Right. Workhorse for uh, Smyrna tonight carrying the ball. But Yamir Knight, he scores all three touchdowns in the two-point conversion, and he is our player of the game. Right, yeah, Pat? Seven rushes, 56 yards, four receptions for 40 yards, nearly 100 all-purpose yards there. And like you mentioned, the three – touchdowns a two-point conversion as well one was uh was one one of those was through the air two of them on the ground the touchdowns yeah um yeah, he's just he does everything here at Smyrna he, you know he's the Knights have, have been elite down here and it's it's uh you know Ymir's time right now and he's making he's making the most of it so yeah Ymir Knight yep player to game tonight and uh, we could probably also give player to game the entire defensive unit for Smyrna. I mean, yeah. West, Chandler, Blaine, Kearney, Charles Carr, Moyer, Darnall, Jenkins, Driver, Spears, Williams, Galban, Stinnett, and Lee. They did a heck of a job tonight against that wing T running attack they of did. the Golden Knights. Our game of the week has been brought to you by First State Orthopedics with 29 physicians at 16 locations providing both surgical and non-surgical treatment for a variety of orthopedic conditions, and they're specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. Serving team physicians for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local and recreational competitive leagues. Docs at First State Ortho are readily available to all local emergency departments, medical aid, and urgent care centers for consult and treatment. Call them at 302-322-3400, visit firststateortho.com, and be sure to mention you saw their ad here on Delaware Live Sports. Final score here, 22 to nothing, Smyrna over Sussex Central. We will see you again tomorrow. Noon kickoff on the air at 11.45, the Civil War battle between Dover and Caesar Rodney. So for Roger Hall, the IT department here at Smyrna, Bill Schultz, the athletic director, for Mike Lang on camera, and Pat Gariantes producing and color analyst. I'm Glenn Fraser saying so long from Smyrna High and Charles V. Williams Stadium. Have a great weekend. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home.